Nearly 30 years ago, the college football universe was in a combustible state. Causing the stars above to collide and realign. The SEC Championship game was created. And in the beginning, like heaven and earth itself, it was Alabama versus Florida. Intercepted by Langham. Touchdown. At first, the old guard tide prevailed, but it was the Gators who would redefine the physics of the gridiron. During the next decade, the gravitational pull of the game kept bringing these two rivals back together, producing two titanic title collisions. We welcome you to the SEC Championship, the Crimson Tide and the Florida Gators. Touchdown, Florida! This guy's unbelievable. The Gators have beaten the Alabama Crimson Tide to win the SEC Championship. Left side. Touchdown, Alabama. Alabama, the dreaming is over. On judgment day, I won't fade away. I'll be pushing on. That Alabama victory sparked a seismic shift. The Saban dynasty was launched. I want to win every game we play. And what I would like for every football team to do that we play is to sit there and say, I hate playing against these guys. And over the years, its trajectory morphed from stifling defense to revolutionary offense. Jones to the end zone. Oh, what a catch! Devontae Smith! With the Gators' star flickering, Dan Mullen returned to Gainesville and ignited a stellar rebirth. You gotta love the opportunity to go play the game tonight. Take advantage of this opportunity that we've been given. Most turbulent of years, what could be more comforting and exhilarating than yet another meeting between Alabama and Florida for the championship of the SEC? And with that, we bring you to Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta and the SEC championship on CBS. Presented by Dr. Pepper. The stars aligned just in time, didn't they? Seventh ranked Florida, the winners of the East. Number one Alabama, the winners of the West. As you take a look at the college football standings, we congratulate the other champions, Oklahoma, the Big 12, Ohio State in the Big 10, and Clemson in the ACC. And that sets us up for the nightcap in prime time in the SEC here in Atlanta. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler with Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl. In a normal year, this game would have been played two weeks ago. We all know that 2020, anything but normal. But through a lot of hard work, we all made it. We got here. <laughs> and the one thing that is kind of normal, partner, is that these two teams have been it in this game more than anybody else, each making their 13th appearance. And now it's for the SEC championship and more. It is. You know, uh, it's year 151 of college football, and we made it to the finish line. But this is a sport of opinion. And yesterday and all day today, you saw these great teams trying to leave one lasting impression. We got one more game to go. Number one, and Florida's in here saying, can we make an impression and knock off the big guys? I love watching these athletes play consequential football, and we got a good one. Well, in a pinnacle game like this, you've always got subplots, too, and we got a really good one tonight because the two quarterbacks are obviously in the Heisman Trophy chase, and who knows, maybe whoever has the better night will win that coveted award. The voting ends on Monday. And there's Kyle Trask getting ready to take the field. Mac Jones will shortly. You know, a couple of months ago, Nick Saban said it used to be that good defense 
beat good offenses. He said good defenses don't beat good offenses anymore, and we got two of the best offenses in the country. Well, you better have a good offense in modern football, and to have a good offense, you better have a trigger man, and these two teams have two of the best in college football. I love these two guys. They came up the hard way. They learned the offense. They earned the respect of their teammates, and they let it go, and they've got some weapons around them to let it go. When Trask throws the ball or Mac Jones throws the ball in this game, they start out with two guys in college football that really no one can cover, Devontae Smith and Kyle Pitts. I don't even know if NFL teams could cover these guys. I know college team guys can't. But that's not the only one. They got a second guy, Najee Harris for Alabama, running back, receiver, and Kadarius Toney. He is a highlight film every time he touches the ball. And by the way, they got more guys than just those two each. They got a lot of weapons on these offenses. So with things being almost equal, maybe the defense will be the difference. Yeah, it could be. I tell you, I think the team that holds on to the ball will win the game. All right. Well, one team averages almost 50 points a game. The other one, 41 points a game. So we expect fireworks indoors in Atlanta. Alabama already on the field. Dan Mullen ready to lead Florida out. The SEC Championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper, sponsored by Aflac. GMC. Sonic. And by Dr. Pepper. Kickoff coming up. Set to crown a champion in Atlanta between number one Alabama and number seven Florida. But first we check in with the third member of our team, Jamie Rudolph. Jamie. Brad, tonight marks the 69th football game played in this 2020 SEC season. It's a remarkable number considering 71 were meant to be played. COVID-19 protocols postponed a handful, but scheduling flexibility prevailed. However, this season was not without its stresses. I spoke with several players from both teams. I asked them one simple question. What was the hardest part? They all took me back to the beginning. An isolated, extended training camp, starting a season with all the outside noise. It was tough. It was distracting. But what is more rewarding after a 10-game unprecedented SEC schedule than Alabama and Florida playing once again for this trophy after this historic, irregular season? As Nick Saban said, it's a pretty nice trophy. You get a ring, and the memories last forever. The 41st meeting all time between the Gators and the Tide, and it's for the title. And here's the championship history. As I mentioned, each team has been in it 13 times. Alabama leads the series 5-4 to four in the matchups, and you see the national titles. Dan Mullen in his third year has done a great job giving Florida to the top of the East. Nick Saban in his 14th year for Alabama. The perennial West champs, it seems, except last year. Florida won the toss and deferred. Alabama will start offensively. And our starting lineups presented by Dr. Pepper will bring out Matt Jones with the starting lineup. And a sensational year. Number two in the country in completion percentage. 27 touchdowns, only three interceptions. He's been nothing short of magnificent. And the rest of the offense that trots out with Mack looks like this. You talk about Guys that sometimes get forgotten a little bit, the offensive line, the time that they give him, Alex Leatherwood, that left tackle, one of the captains for tonight's game. There's a lot of good football players on the field like we talked about. One job I would not want to have tonight, lining up against Leatherwood. <laughs> good point. So first down, Alabama, Najee Harris trots in to join Mac Jones in the backfield. And he'll get the carry. And only got about a yard. Mahmoud Diabate in on the stop for the Florida defense. That looks like this. Defensive front. Metro Miller, the leading tackler, coming in at 16 tackles last week. And there's the back end with the secondary for Todd Grantham. Alabama has an extra offensive lineman in the game. Play action, Jones zips it down the middle and got it to Devontae Smith across midfield. 
So immediately, number six makes his presence felt. Yeah, only a two-man route. They max protected, made sure. Jones is there. He's going to come across on the dig route. It's almost impossible to throw it over his head because he goes up and gets everything. 19-yard gain, and immediately Alabama and Florida territory. Back to Najee Harris, weaving his way. Good run by Najee Harris down to the 42-yard line. The Abate had to make the stop again. You wonder, I think the big question going into this game is can this Florida defense handle this balanced attack from Alabama? LSU last week ran 86 plays against this defense. They've got to find a way to take away something from Alabama. Najee Harris got seven, second down and three. He'll try to pick up the first down, and he does, and he got to the next level down to the 29-yard line. Came right out of his shoe in a first down Alabama. Watching the game last week on that slippery Arkansas field, Najee was somewhat ineffective. But on this turf, he is good on fast turf. He darts, and he's tough to bring down. He's not just a scamper guy. He's a run-your-over guy, too. Comes in with almost 1,100 yards rushing. He's over that now. And, of course, 22 touchdowns on the ground leads the nation. From the 29, first down, Bama. Jones wanted a throwback screen. He's going to have to just knock it in the dirt. Florida had it pretty well read. Brenton Cox was applying the pressure. Yeah, I, I think it was a bit of a busted uh, play by Alabama. I think they made a mistake. Nobody to throw it to. Well, there's good, bad, and ugly for yes. Florida. 31 <laughs> sacks, which is good. Allowing that many yards, not so much. And they've given up 28 points plus five times. That's their ugly. I think the, the Florida coaches are wondering, was it intentional grounding? Was there someone there? There were a lot more blue jerseys yes, than there, there were right. white jerseys. I know that. I think it was to Najee Harris, but he couldn't find him to throw him the ball. Yep, Najee couldn't make his number 22 known. This time they fake it to him to go down the middle. That ball was tipped, I think. It was intended for Slade Bolden, but I think somebody's got a hand on it. It might have been a debate. He's been involved in a lot of plays. I think it was Diabate, number 11, that got his hand on that ball. See the lane. He reaches out with his right hand and just gets it before Bolden can. Good play. Alabama going with a little tempo here, trying to hurry it up on a third down and 10. They're a 59% third down conversion team, which is number one in the country, and they might have gotten a 3-5 on this one. Marlon Dunlap, I think, jumped into the neutral zone. Matt Leffel is our referee, and he'll let us know. Offside with contact, number 91 on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Third down. Landon Dickerson actually participates in this with his head. He moves it around, and when he does <laughs> that, just that little, little tweak right there just is enough. The quarterback's doing it. Mac Jones does a great job of it. They don't actually go silent count. They fake the clap, and they got him. Makes the third down a little easier. Third and five for Jones. Pressure coming. Got rid of it. Complete to Devontae Smith. Broke one tackle. Did he get there? I think he did by stretching out. I don't know if he got a great spot on that one. Good pickup by Najee Harris to clean up the pocket. Number 22 right there. And as Alabama goes fast, they're yeah. going to get the first down. Yeah. The sneak. Quarterback sneak. They didn't even wait to see no. if they wanted to measure. <laughs> and Dickerson led the way, and That's Mac Jones right behind him. See, that replay stopped it, so even though they got the first down, if it's called short now, they might have to do it again. Play was stopped. I don't think we've had five measurements all year. They might have to bring the sticks out here, or first they'll look at... Uh, replay and a review well gene taught us why they don't have to measure as much anymore because they mark it on the line all the time right but halfway through the year he says you know they always try to get it to the near did he step out before he reached the ball I don't think so. No, he didn't. He never landed. I, I think you're did. right. I don't think the spot was very no. good. Again, he's still in midair right there, and he has crossed the line with the ball. So 
They should get it with the replay. They did get it with the play that didn't count. Let's see what happens. David Almas, our replay official. And remember, without the penalty, they would not have got that spot, that first down right there. Gene's territories are our rules official. Gene, what do you think? You know, as I was looking at, I was seeing if someone was out of bounds, and when I look at the headlines, when he's After winding review, the clock, the so he has he the been. Line to gain. Therefore, it's a first down on the 19-yard line. So they got it either way. I think that's a great <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they did. And it's in the red zone where Alabama is very effective. 91% of the time they score something, including 41 touchdowns this year. So remember the third and 10 offsides. You know, it, if you think about Florida and their defense, they almost have to play a perfect football game. Doesn't mean you have to play soft or anxious, but making those self-inflicted wounds before the snap, that really helped hurt you. Two tight ends, Forrest Dahl and Billingsley out there. Play fake. Jones on a crossing route to Forrest Dahl, and he's got it down to the eight-yard line first to goal. And this ball was going to Forrest Dahl no matter what. This was a tight end delay. The rest of the receivers were decoys. The tight end on the left, number 87, is going to block, hold, and it was going to him the whole way. Forrest Dahl coming off a career-high six catches for 52 yards last week. His first one got him down close, and Najee Harris gets him to the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Love the way Najee just kind of patiently bounces around and waits for those blocks to the right side of the line. Neal gets a good block. Second level block by Ekior that time. And then Najee just trots it into the end zone. Record in for the point after. Hasn't missed one this year. In fact, he hasn't missed a field goal either. Extra point up and good. Got some bad news for Florida. When Alabama scores on their opening drive, they're 147 and 8 under Nick Saban. This guy knows how to find the end zone for the 23rd time this year. Najee Harris for the score. For connected TV to watch today. Najee Harris making history on the opening drive of the football game for Alabama. And remember, not just a touchdown run, but the key block he got on third down to keep Mac Jones clean for that first down throw. He's also tied Sean Alexander's school record of 50 touchdowns if you add in his receiving scores over his career. But some pretty impressive names, including a couple of Heisman Trophy winners that he just passed with that score on the ground. Kadarius Tony and Malik Davis waiting on Rackard's kick. Kadarius Tony camps under it at the four. He is dangerous, and he's already in the open field, but a good open field tackle brings him down at the 28-yard line. Patrick Sutan on the special teams makes a nice open field tackle. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper starting lineups, and it starts with number 11. Kyle Trask comes in leading the country. 40 touchdown passes, only five interceptions, and two of those came a week ago. Also leads the country in completions. There's the group that joins him, Trayvon Grimes. Some people forget about him. He's got eight scoring receptions as well, along with the other guys that Gary talked about in the open. And his first pass is Malik Davis. You know, uh, Ness, uh, Coach Saban catches a little grief sometimes by putting his stars on special teams, but it's a good thing he had a sure tackler Satan on that one because that was a open field tackle and they had their best player out there to make it. There was a lot of green this side of the hash marks, that's for sure, on that return. Damian Pierce. They fake it to him and Trask keeps it. Did he miss the hand up? Because I think it? the I think he did. Can't imagine they'd be running a play like this this early and take a hit right here. Oh, yeah, the ball popped out, but you may be right. He was going to keep the ball, or he thought Damian was going to take it, and all of a sudden, it was almost a disaster. That's one of those I-got-it-you-take-it plays. It's a good thing he got it back. Florida also good on third down conversions this year. They got a third and six right here. Trask down the middle, and what a catch by guess who? Kyle Pitts. He's back. 
Well, he was matched up against Brian Branch, the true freshman, number 14. Tough matchup. Safety against a six foot six and throw it high, and he goes and gets it. That's what you talked about a few minutes ago, and it's a first down at the 46 yard line. Naquan right in the backfield with Trask, who's getting ready to light it up again. Maybe he'll have to keep this one dragged down from behind, but he got to the 49-yard line. Will Anderson made late, the tackle. Late flag, and I wonder if they're going to call roughing on this player unnecessary roughness. Looks like a clean tackle to me. You know, uh, personal foul targeting. Number, number eight, eight on the yeah. defense. Christian Harris ducked his head. Under further review. Christian Harris ducked his head on the tackle. I don't know if he made contact, but he did duck his head. Their most important linebacker, arguably, if his targeting holds up, he's going to be out of the game. I don't. I, uh, he, he missed him. He I don't, missed maybe him. he tried to target him. Yeah, but he missed him. He hit him in the back. Yeah, he almost actually hit Will Anderson as well. I think. Gene Steratore is going to join us again. Look, yeah, what we've got to know in this situation is Trask is still a runner, so he's not defenseless. So the only type of targeting we can have here is, is with no the use of the helmet, targeting. and I don't think there's anything there. Yeah, they picked it up, took it back. Well, so far, two reviews, and they got them both right. So, luckily for number eight, Christian Harris, who's playing with a shoulder injury a little bit from the game against Arkansas last week, and he is their leading tackler for this defense. There's the front guys. Harris, as I just mentioned, their leading tackler with Allen and Moses and the back end in the secondary. So Christian Harris was a somewhat of a game time decision with that injury. Practiced all week but did not have contact. And the way he tried to make that tackle, you almost saw he was favoring that arm. Yep. Two tight ends set with Pitts and Zipperer in there for Florida. And Malik Davis in the backfield on second down and seven. Trask bobbled the snap a little bit, going deep. Out there is Pitts. No good, incomplete Sertan on the coverage. Well, that's an NFL matchup right there. Most likely two number one draft picks, Sertan and Pitts. Might get a chance to do this for the next 10 years, is yep. what you're saying. If the ball was in play, <laughs> I like 84 on that to the outside. You got to keep the ball on the field just a little bit too wide, uncatchable. Kyle Pitts didn't play against LSU. Had they had him, maybe it would have been a different outcome. We'll never know. Third down and seven. And just inside the Gator 49. Trash going to go deep. He's got Tony, and he's got it. Touchdown, Florida. Canarius Tony. Kadarius Tony was in the slot and he was matched up against the true freshman Malachi Moore in the slot there's the matchup watch him go to the outside and then turn and he's got a beat and it's a perfect throw in stride 51 yard touchdown pass and we're an extra point away from being even the longest pass by Malachi Moore has given up all season. Extra point by McPherson is up and good. Well, touchdown pass number 41 for Kyle Trask, and it couldn't be much prettier than what it was. Anybody surprised that it's started the way it was reported to start? They got <laughs> offenses. 73 yards in six plays, 7-7 in Atlanta. Five minutes into the game, and the fireworks have started in Atlanta, 7-7. Kadarius Tony, his 10th receiving touchdown of the year from 51 yards out. He can do a lot of different things, including return punts. Used as a running back. That time, a perfect throw and catch to tie the game. Ellingsley's not going to get out. I think uh, Hellams, number 29, had a block in the back that time. It's going to go back another, like, half the distance here. It's going to take it inside the 10 or very close.
Securing the return, illegal block in the back. On the return team, number 29, 10-yard penalty, first down. Not 60 minutes tomorrow. What does the Pfizer vaccine mean for the pandemic? 60 Minutes talks to the team's key players to find out. That's tomorrow on CBS. And they will spot the ball at the 9. A little different. They started at the 30 last time because of the penalty by the Gators on the kickoff. So a two tight end set, Forrestall and Billingsley in there. Forrestall switching over to the left side. Both of them go that way, in fact. And Devontae Smith in motion. And this is Najee Harris trying to follow his blockers. He got about three. So that was good fill that time by that Gator defense. Coming up, those safeties, they make a lot of tackles. You're going to have to fill fast and then hold on and read it correctly for the play action passes. It's a real chess game for those safeties in modern college football. Florida's defense ranks fifth in the SEC, Colin, sixth against the rush. They stop Najee Harris after a short game here. It's second down and seven. Jones firing far side, and he got Devontae Smith again. And another perfect throw. Only a three-man rush stacked to the outside. Devontae's on a safety this time. You get him on that safety like that, no way you can cover him. Three-man rush, plenty of clean pocket to throw the ball, and he steps in and delivers it. And a 24-yard strike and a first down at the 36. I think both teams now realize that uh, it's a score-point football game. Jones off the play fake. Goes again, complete to Billingsley. And another Alabama first down. Because Jalen Waddle injury has really opened up playing time for Billingsley, number 19. is a hybrid type of a tight end. By putting him in that H-back tight end spot, he gets matched up on linebackers a lot, and he's pretty quick. So completions of 24 and 15 yards has put Alabama back in Florida territory at the 49. Najee Harris cuts it outside, spins his way out for about eight, maybe nine. What a great combination of moves and power for this guy. And he's smart, as we talked about, picks up the blitzes, catches the ball out of the backfield, probably one of the most valuable backs in college football. And he's got a first down, and he's into the secondary again and blasts his way down inside the 30. And did I mention? Well, I know Brad did. We mentioned that that offensive line is pretty high quality. Yeah. Talking to... Najee Harris again. And as I was going to say, talking to Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator on the phone the other night, he said he wanted to go up-tempo. He feels that the Gator defensive line is not as deep as maybe they would like, and he feels that they can run the ball, hurry up, and tire them out for later in the game. You can see he's doing it already. Sark in his second stint as the coordinator at Alabama. What a marvelous job, and he's been rumored as a possible head coach elsewhere. Second down, and almost seven. Quick throw out on the flat. Devontae Smith. It's going to be third down, and about four. Marco Wilson on the stop. So another third down. They need to get just inside the 20-yard line to move the sticks. Already four catches for Devontae Smith for 52 yards here in the first quarter. Interesting, Alabama allowed Florida to bring on their nickel package that time. They did not go hurry up. Jones. A lot of pressure, and he stuck it in there, but no! It's intercepted by Trey Dean. And the ball comes out again, and Devontae Smith has got it back for Alabama. John Mechie was with the hit. Number eight dislodged it, and Devontae got it. This is going to be a crazy first down for the Tide. Well, it was a really nice interception on the play by Trey Dean. Just took it right away on the interception. Right there, I thought it was a catch, and there's the robbery. 
Man. And here comes the tackle. Boom. And there's the fumble recovered. Be first down, Alabama. Crazy way to get a first down, and we hope that... Uh, You're not allowed to have a blindside block, but you sure can make a blindside tackle. Right. Trey Dean is the recipient, and Mechie saved the day there. Trey Dean, a Georgia native out of Hampton. And they're already short of safety with Sean Davis out of this football game. That'll be a tough loss for the Gators. Take a look, another look at... Trey Dean's interception. Slightly behind Forrestal, and that allowed Trey Dean to come in there and muscle it away. Forrestal had both hands on it. Yep. You could see it, and then he just picked his pocket. And coming back the other way, Mechie with that blast. And Alabama recovers and will have a first down. Trey Dean heading to the sideline. We're heading to a short break. We'll be right back. Trey Dean's out of the tent. Looks like he's okay. That's great news. Made yep. a great play on that one, and, uh, you know, you never expect that tackle like that. Ravez Johnson takes his spot, at least for now. He's a true freshman, and let's see if the Alabama offense tries to pick on him. Jones scanning the field. Lobs one Devante Smith. Touchdown, Alabama. Well, Florida's in what they call quarters coverage. And what Steve Sarkisian drew up here was something that can beat it. When you cross receivers from one side, you eat up two defenders, and then you sneak Devontae White across. Really tough. They're trying to play quarters, and it's impossible. Tough to cover quarters when you cross that guy, and that is a beautifully designed play by Steve Sarkisian. Rockard's in for the point after, up and good. It's actually going to go as a 31-yard touchdown drive in one play, but that's because of the crazy play that preceded it. 14-7, Alabama. Gary, that would have been a 91-yard touchdown <laughs> drive, but we had the crazy interception and then the fumble recovery by Alabama that I, made it a one-play drive in 14 seconds. Yeah, I, I think uh, he fed, you, if you're a... Uh, Mac Jones there. He fed the guy who got the fumble and saved your interception <laughs> on the play. I think he knew he had that right from the snap. He was just waiting for Devontae to get there. Short kick. Kadarius is Tony. will take it from the five. He had a good return last time. Little hesitation step. Got it across the 20 to the 21. DeMarco Helms made the stop there. And now Duke Project Smarter presented by the Home Depot. Well, when you've got so many great football players, uh, it's smart to use all your stars. And uh, Devontae Smith showed us last week what a star can do. Remember, we thought this was in the stands. Yeah. He actually went up 10 feet, 8 inches to grab it. And he could have dunked it on the play. Not only that, that's his dad right in his bicep of the left arm, which is an awesome picture. Amazing picture. Here's Kadarius Tony with a swing pass, and Tony's got a first down. Out across the 31-yard line. One more shot. Look at that uh, picture of his dad. How about that? <laughs> you we, keep that one forever, Absolutely. Man. Think about the odds of that happening. And remember, he was probably there his whole life teaching him how to catch the ball and run routes, and there he is. Very hard to keep teach somebody to make that kind of grab, <laughs> and he makes so many of them. I, they I, look routine by now. I guarantee you he's taking credit for it. Sure he will. <laughs> That's what all dads do. Yep. From the 32, Tony this time on the ground with a cutback run and a good one. Canarius Tony, another first down. We said he can do it in a variety of ways, and this time he gets it out to the 45. When we talked with Nick Saban. He was especially concerned with number one. He says, yeah, Kyle Pitts is a really tough matchup, but we never know how they're going to get the ball to Kadarius Tony. Quick screens, jet sweeps, and we've already seen how he goes down the sideline. And he said they create so many head ed headaches, Advil can't even handle yeah, it. That's what he said, exactly. Out. At the 45, first down Florida, trying to answer the Alabama touchdown here, but just under five minutes to go, first quarter. Just a three-man rush. Trask sets up, loads, fires deep. Got a man, and he just overshot Justin Shorter. 
If that pass was a little shorter, it would have been a touchdown. Yeah, he had Josh Jones that time, and he did a stutter down the field. Watch him go down the field and just stutter and then go. That's all you need. You just need that DB to just slow down a half step, and you go right by him. Right now, Dan Mullen is pitching a perfect game with his play calling. And you know what? He almost has to. He's got to keep spreading that ball and keep this Alabama defense off balance, and he is doing it. You got to figure you have to score about 45 to stay in I this thing. I think so. Second and 10. Trask looks left, comes back across the middle, and he's got hits. And it's a first down where Sertan draped all over him. Well, I'm running out of things to say good here. It's only the first <laughs> quarter. How about this? That's a tight end who knows how to get off the jam with a defensive back who's going to be drafted in the first round. The guy's an amazing football player, and they're different. I said that in the Georgia game. They're different without him, and they lost last week without him. Didn't play in the loss to LSU. First down at the Alabama 45. Trask looking left the whole way. Goes that way and in and out of the hands of Trayvon Grimes. A little bit of double coverage over there, and he still put it close to a completion. One of the question marks I had is could this offensive line for Florida, they gave up four sacks last week against LSU. They stayed max protection that time, and look how good a protection they had in that pocket for Kyle Trask. They even kept in pits on that play to block. They bring in Emory Jones at quarterback. Normally the running quarterback, but who knows on second down and 10. And it is a run all the way. Trying to get to the edge, and he did. And he's got a first down and then some inside the 30. Good play call in there by Jones to pick up the first down. Well, remember, Dan Mullen was the offensive coordinator when Florida played against Alabama with Tim Tebow, and he used this type of attack with a running quarterback. He also had Dak Prescott in Mississippi State. So he knows that a running quarterback gives this Bama defense problems. He's putting them in in the first quarter. Got a 17-yard gain out of it and a first down for Florida, continuing their drive. Here comes a blitz. Trask over the middle, and this time incomplete as Dylan Moses was covering Kyle Pitts that time. Tough coverage for a linebacker, but Dylan Moses did a nice job. Five out of nine, including a touchdown so far for Kyle Trask. That's Kadarius Tony in motion on second down and 10. Here's a running play <laughs> by a running back, I should say. <laughs> that was pretty good. Aquan right for a yard. I could, the surprise in that call. He was like, <laughs> like, what are they doing? <laughs> Just enough. You've got to sprinkle it in. And this time the Alabama defense is ready for it. Take on the lead blocker and make the play. Good job by Christian Harris, number eight. Tough third down coming up, third and nine. Alabama has not blitzed yet and tried to get Trask that ball out of his hand quickly. Doesn't look like they're going to do it here either. Empty backfield. Five receivers set for the Gators. Trying to get down to the 18-yard line to keep this drive alive. Play clock. Down to two. Gonna have to hustle. Just got it, and it's trashed running. He doesn't get the first down, but they're gonna be in field goal range. Christian Barmore in on the tackle. Well, he always says to Dan about his quarterbacks is they have to be willing runners. They don't have to be great runners. But that time Barmore saved the first down because I think he might have got two or three more yards, and Dan might have been tempted to go for it on fourth down. Evan McPherson, who missed a 51-yarder against LSU in the fog last week that he'd love to have back, will try from 40 yards out. Evan McPherson's kick on the way, just inside the right upright, good. So Florida has to settle for three with just under two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Alabama with the lead, Florida within four. Isaac, thanks. 14-10 here in the SEC Championship game where our aerial coverage of tonight's game is provided by Goodyear. Christmas lights, the city of Atlanta.
You know, Ness, I was just thinking last week we did Army Navy and there was a total of 12 first downs in the whole game. <laughs> we're already at 14 in this game. I knew you were going to bring that up early. <laughs> well, I didn't know if they'd get there this early, but they did. This kick goes a yard deep. Billingsley's going to bring it out. And the big tight end wide receiver type gets it out across the 25. Nice return. Early comparison of the two star quarterbacks. Here's how it looks so far. Both looking good. That one interception, the only bad spot for Mac Jones. Jamie. Well, it's become a bit of a game in Tuscaloosa. Which Alabama opponent is going to call Mac Jones a game manager this week to really tick off the offensive line and the wide receivers? Well, I asked Mac if it bugs him. He said, what good quarterback isn't a good game manager? He said last week, Arkansas dropped eight guys into the backfield. I'll game manage my way into seven-yard checkdowns all day long. <laughs> Absolutely. You saw Trey Dean is back in there. After being shaken up on that interception return. Najee Harris for about five. Well, so far to me, the difference in the game is that this Alabama team has a better running attack. And a good balance. Yes, a little more balance. So it's a little more on Kyle Trask, where the Alabama team has a two, two three ways to attack you, but when they can run the ball, that opens up the play-action game for them. Jones moves Harris behind him in a pistol set here at the 31, gives it to Najee Harris, and only about three. Nice job. By the defense, Donovan Steiner and Bretton Cox uh, there to make the hit for Florida. And that's that safety up there making those tackles for two or three yards. And that's great. When you can sneak that seventh and eighth guy up there as safeties, it really helps. But it's dangerous long term. Jones has time. Crossing route. Broken up. Great job defensively by Florida and Brad Stewart. That star in the secondary. And got a late flag. Personal foul, hands to the face on the defense, number 17. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Wow, that's a killer. Zach sure Carter was. with the penalty. It was on the left side of Mac Jones that time, number 17. I don't know if it was on Brown or Leatherwood. There it is over there on Leatherwood. Right there is the play. Leatherwood's got a skin. You see how he pushes him back with his face uh, mask? That's a good call. Got it. He got all of that. And the center judge immediately threw the flag. So instead of a stop, it's a first down Alabama at the 48. Some costly penalties on the Gators here in the first quarter. Forrestell in motion. Haji Harris gets the call. Broke a tackle or two. And a good run again. And Trill Miller brings him down, but not before he got inside the 43 yard line kind of feels like he's skipping through there doesn't he just kind of hops in there he looks keeps almost feels like he's got both feet on the ground and then dances away to a, another eight nine yard game Najee came in with almost 3,500 rushing yards in his Alabama career and he's adding to it tonight this time he goes out as a wide receiver to the top of the screen Jones pumps once has some pressure and he's going to go down he wanted to go deep, but he waited too long. Well, Mac Jones should not have been surprised by what the coverage was. When they moved out Najee, nobody went with him. He knew it was zone. He just couldn't find anybody. Did he get a check down? Nobody to throw to. Good coverage by that zone coverage by the Florida Gators and force him into a sack. Andrew Chatfield with the sack to end the first quarter. End of one, 14 to 10. Top ranked Alabama will return to Atlanta after this message and a word from your local station. Back to start the second quarter. The SEC Championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper. And the second quarter opens with Alabama at the Florida 48, third down and seven. Empty backfield. Mac Jones down the middle and complete and it's Slay Bolden and it's a first down and we welcome you back to the booth Red Nestler Gary Danielson Jamie's down on the field first quarter is about what we expected hard to stop the stars it is but Florida's had three key mistakes on third down third and ten and an offside penalty 
Third down, they had an interception and they fumbled. Yep. And then they just had a third down penalty with their face mask right there. And then they convert right then again. So the drive has stayed alive. Florida could have gotten off the field. They have not gotten off the field. There's a little miscues. Two penalties and a fumble. First down at the 33. Alabama playing with a four-point lead here. Play fake, the pump. And now the deep ball. Jones going through all of it. And Mechie, he ran out of real estate. Caught it, but he's out of bounds. Jones was looking to his right that time, and by the time he got back to the other side of the field, the defender falls down, but it's too late to rocket the ball in there. Torrance is the one who fell down, and Mechie goes, oh. Mac, I had my chance. Mac Jones told us a couple of weeks ago, he tells his wide receivers, never stop running. I'd rather underthrow and complete the pass than overthrow it incomplete. That one was an overthrow incomplete. Najee Harris for about three. Harris starting to rack up yardage. 74 already here early in the second quarter down again another opportunity to get off the field they've got to get to the 23 of the Gators for a first down third down and seven Devontae in the slot Najee now will come all the way across the field that's where the ball is going great catch out in front of him he's close to a first down and if he didn't get it maybe it's close enough to go for it again another one of those plays where it was only going to Najee this was a screen to the outside the receivers were blocking the whole time and as you say it's close did they call the first down yep he took the yard marker yep. with him so that was good enough first down Alabama another third down conversion another review on a first down play Najee Harris came in with 27 catches on the year. I thought Najee Harris showed his ability just catching the ball on that play. Did he get to the line on this one? Ooh, his whole body goes sliding out of bounds right at the marker. This might give us a better look. Puts his shoulder into Marco Wilson. Ball's in his left hand, remember, as he goes out of bound. I didn't see anything yet to overturn the call. Gene, what do you think? Gene Steratore's with us. What you've got to remember, it's where that ball crosses the sideline, too, guys. So that's the angle they're looking for. And as you just said, Gary, they ruled this a first down, so they need to see something clear and obvious. To me, I feel like that ball crossed the sideline prior to, uh, to it reaching the first down. But you've got to have that clear and obvious evidence. Again, they moved the sticks already, so if they uh, it, reverse this, they it, have to go back and reset makes, everything. It makes sense that it seems a little short, doesn't it? But is does the replay officials have enough to overturn it? it would be fourth at what? Six inches? Yeah. And as I said, if he didn't get it, it might be an opportunity to go on fourth down, being that close. Well, this one is taking a while, as well it should, because that's because it's at the 23-yard line. So we're almost in the red zone spot here. Alabama leading by four. And here comes our call. After review, the ruling on the field stands is called. It's first down. First down, Alabama. So Najee Harris, the dual threat, that time as a receiver. First of all, he made a really nice catch as the ball was right out in front of him, and then he put the power move on to get to the sticks. I think Sark has had two really great calls in this game. The tight end delay call really produced a touchdown by Najee Harris, a play later, and then the crossing route to Devontae Smith. He knew the coverage, and I think Mac Jones knew he had a touchdown at the snap. See if he comes up with another one. First down at the 23. Jones wide open out in the flat is Xavier Williams. There's a new name you can add to the wide receiver list. And with Jalen Waddle not in there, other guys are getting chances to play. And as we all know, Alabama recruits good players. And when they ever got a chance to make the play, of course, that one was really pitch and catch, wasn't yeah. it? Marco Wilson was about 10 yards away from him. Had to close in to make the tackle at the 11. Back to the ground. Najee Harris broke two tackles. A 
third, and he got to the five. He's really good at giving up ground, but keeping his momentum to stay away from the tackle. He's got those quick feet. Remember, he's 225, 230 pounds. Now watch him give ground a little bit to the outside, but still use the straight arm to shake loose and gain positive yards. It's a little the, jump stop in the does it all, traffic, he? and then powers his way down just outside the five. So far, Alabama, 14 runs, 14 passes. Nice balance. They can get a first down at the one. Second down and four. And this time, Florida does a nice job to bottle things up. Diabate has been in on a lot of tackles already in this first half. Yeah, I think there was a lot happening that time, too. I think inside Slayton, number 56, was making a pile right there in the middle of the play. Make piles inside and then let those linebackers clean up. Also, Carter, Zachary Carter, number 17, did not give up any yardage. He stood his blocker up and allowed the linebackers to make the play. So does Todd Grantham come after him here, or does he sit back? It's third down. Slade Bolden in motion. Here's the throw. Najee Harris oh. made a man miss. And touchdown, Alabama. He does it again. A reverse spin just as he catches it. That's a veteran player who's played a lot of football. Great anticipation. He feels the guy covering him is coming from the inside and spins inside at the same time. What a play. First receiving touchdown of the year for number 22, the eighth of his brilliant career, the 51st touchdown of his Auburn, of the <laughs> Auburn, excuse me, Alabama career. And the extra point is up and good. Najee Harris is the receiver. Mac Jones, another touchdown toss. Dude Perfect makes a special appearance as part of the Dr. Pepper's much anticipated 2020 tuition giveaway. You won't want to miss it. And Dude Perfect's got some crazy stuff. Just be around to see that at halftime. It's fun. <laughs> I've saw a preview. I've seen, I've yeah. seen it too. It's pretty good, isn't it? Well, I can tell you, Mac Jones didn't have to be that perfect on that throw. The guy's wide open, and there's a reason. Florida busted. Malik Davis on the kick return. Davis out across the 30 to the 32. And that's where Florida will go back to work as we take you back so to the touchdown. We've been talking about Dan Mullen scheming to get up guys open. Now watch Sark. He puts one guy in motion. And then right after the snap, you'll see the confusion by Florida. Stop it right there. Look at this. Two guys covering one guy on the play, and that's the breakdown. And uh, make one guy whiss, and you're in the end zone. Easy pitch and catch, but a little bit of motion in that Florida secondary who struggled making mistakes all year just made a big one there. Let's see if Kyle Trask and company can answer. Starting from the 32. Trask. A little too far out in front of Malik Davis. They try that wheel rod that worked so well against Georgia. I don't, I don't blame them, do you? Yeah, well, it worked a lot in that game. And this time, Christopher Allen, the defensive end, instead of getting picked, they put the end man in the line of scrimmage on him and wheel with him so there's nobody to pick on the play. And that's why it was covered well. Empty backfield. Pitts. No, here they come. There's the throw in the flat. One missed tackle for Davis. And he got the first down. You know, all, all football is the same. When you're blitzing and you have an opportunity to make a tackle in open space, it stops the play. But these good athletes make these open field tackles really tough. That's why you recruit these four and five star guys to make guys miss just like that. Florida was trying to go tempo a little bit there and line up. But instead, They'll settle for the first down at the 43. So shifting on the front wall of Alabama defensively. Trask on first down. In trouble. Down he goes. And Chris Allen with a sack. The sixth of the season for Chris Allen. Well, this was a nice formation by Florida. They went four receivers to the wide side of the field, but no one open when you ride up in the pocket. 
that allowed the sack by Allen. Now look at that, four receivers to one side of the field. And as time Alabama just drops in the zone, so they didn't care if you put five guys there. They were just going to drop to their spots on the field. Last week, eight sacks against Arkansas. And again, very seldom a run by the running backs, Amy and Pierce on the carry. And the first three games of the season, everybody said, oh, what's wrong with Alabama's defense? Well, they got it figured out, and the last seven games, not much for the opponents. And as I talk about this a lot, everybody talks about the teams as you look at Pete Golding, defensive coordinator for Alabama. You know, the teams that are down a little bit, and then they improve as the years go on. But you know, the good teams are improving too. And yeah. Alabama has improved, no doubt about it. Big time. They were really young in the secondary. Those guys got better. Linebackers got a little healthier. Everybody learned how to tackle again, including right now bringing down Kadarius Tony. Ball came out at the end, but it was blown dead. Brian Branch, one it of those was. young guys I talked about, is the guy that got him down. It was that time Alabama was able to put their six defensive backs on the field. They feel they can match up okay and double team different players with six. The problem is, Nick said, when we only have five out there, it's tough to double team both those guys. So we're going to see a punt here. And this is a now on this next series, the Florida defense needs to stop badly. And Jacob Finn does not want to let number six run one back because he can and has, including an 84 yard of this season. Devontae Smith caps under it at the 10. Devontae Smith straight up the middle and all the way out near the 30, so a 20 yard return. And he says, I was that close to breaking that baby. <laughs> that close. I think he's always that close, don't you think? <laughs> Just under eight and a half to go in the half. Great history between these two teams, both making their 13th appearance in the SEC championship game. Now it's time for a taste of tradition presented by Sonic. Here's Jamie. Brad, when you think of the Gators, you think of Steve Spurrier, who led Florida to five SEC championships, including two of the first three against Alabama. Kyle Trask is the first Gator quarterback to wear number 11 since Spurrier's Heisman winning campaign in 1966. And that visor Dan Mullen wears, yeah, he was influenced by the head ball coach too. Mullen started donning the visor as an ode to Spurrier when he was Florida's offensive coordinator 15 years ago. And that number 11 on the left would be a little bit of irony if he wins the Heisman Trophy wearing that jersey. He's certainly in the conversation. So is Mac Jones, who's set to take the snap on first down for Alabama. Swing out to Mechie. John Mechie got about eight before Florida drives him into his own sideline. And you can almost feel the pressure on this a drive. And what will Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator for Florida, come up with? Anything new? Or does he just have to stress to his defense, make the tackle, don't make mistakes, and we can stop these guys? Brian Robinson in the lineup for the first time for Alabama. And he's got a first down run. And he's a guy that would be starting anywhere else in the country, probably, were it not for Najee Harris being in front of him. But when he comes in, he can turn it on as well. Last week, three touchdowns, a career high, and the win over Arkansas for Brian Robinson. Seven forty-five to go in the half. Another Alabama first down at the forty-one. Billingsley in motion. Jones looking the other way, running out of time, and down he goes. And it's Zach Carter and with the sack. Sack 33 leading the SEC. 31 coming into the game, two already. And this time, Mac Jones' internal clock just didn't click off fast enough. He had to feel that. Boy, that's a long time to be looking around in that situation and ended up taking the sack. The fifth sack of the season for Zach Carter. And they finally put Alabama behind the chains a little bit. Second down at 14. Forrestal comes out the tight end as... An extra receiver to the bottom of your screen. They'll keep it on the ground. Robinson, little hesitation run. Dives forward back to the 43-yard line. It'll bring up third down and eight. Coming into this game, Alabama had only been sacked 14 times. And they're going to have 12 men on the field, I believe. Long ball in and out of the hands of Devontae Smith with the flag down that Gary's talking about. 
They went hurry up, and Kyrie Campbell, number 55, just couldn't get off the field. He already was tired. Illegal substitution on the defense. The 12th player did not get off the field. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay third down. The big guy just couldn't get there. That's another one of those little <laughs> penalties that you don't think is yes, a big deal. Absolutely. But and that was that was actually uh, provoked by this Alabama hurry up that time. They took advantage. This wasn't really, you know, they tried to substitute, and Alabama caused the penalty. And now it's a third down and shorter, third and three. Will they keep it on the ground to Robinson? Or will Mac Jones let fly again? Forrestal comes over in the slot on the left. Six offensive linemen in the game for Alabama. It is Robinson. And he got there with second ever, and he's still going. And now there might be a face mask in the bottom of that pile, although I don't think they saw it. At the 44-yard line, he's got a first down. Remember what Sark told me, and I talked about it once. He felt that he could tire out this Florida defense. They're already pounding on him. They're up to 35 plays already, 36 plays in the game. No, 35 plays in the game, approaching 80 if they go 40 in the first half and 40 in the second half. Could have been 15 more, have. as I said. That Good. was a face mask. Good eye, Ness. Nice. see it. Quick throw, Devontae Smith with a stiff arm stretching out as far as he can and got it inside the 40 and this this was just an eyeball one everybody else running a running play and the quarterback looks over and says he's open and there you see why those stats look so good for Mac Jones two guys that were three star players upon arrival at their respective schools and have turned themselves into superstars as Gary said by hard work and patience playing behind other guys to get to this big game and this big season for them Second and five on a bootleg. Jones sets up, going deep, double coverage, and broken up. It was intended for Devontae Smith. Nice job back there by Brad Stewart and Donovan Steiner. Yep, the two safeties that time, the star over the slot. First, number two, Stewart is the star back. He covers the slot, playing inside technique. He knows he's got help to the outside, and a wonderful job that time by Stewart. Not a bad throw. We've seen Devontae make plays like that. I was right? just going to save your Mac Jones. You go, I'm going to give him a chance. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Third and five. Looks like a Blix opportunity. The linebacker out here on the running back. That says man to man. Florida's got everybody standing up right now at the line of scrimmage. Are they coming after him? Because I'm reading man. They are. And whistles. We have a timeout before the snap. We did, indeed. Third down and five coming up for Alabama when we come back to Atlanta after this. Well, you know, if you're looking at this game, Alabama team is five for six on third down, but part of it has been the help from Florida that they brought on the field. Offsides on the third down play, that's really not a miscue, but it was an opportunity on third down to get off the field. Then the face mask penalty, and then on third down again, too many men on the field. So four different times, Florida had an opportunity to get off the field, and they did not. Here's another opportunity. A third down and five for Alabama. Eighth play of the drive at the Gator. 39. Pressure coming. Jones rifles it. And now forward progress for Devontae Smith. Did he get to the first down? He might be a hair really shot. Really close, I think. isn't he? He takes that after he catches it. He takes a half step back. Are we going to get another? Are we going to get another? Where was the timeout? The player was short of the line to gain. Florida takes his first I timeout of the half. Dan Mullen called timeout. He wanted to take a look at it. And Mac Jones wanted to do a quarterback sneak, and he couldn't get the center judge out of the way. Play stops with 4.55 remaining in a half. Another fourth down now in Atlanta. Yeah, we do. Big one coming up right here. Fourth down in a inches as Devontae Smith his body crossed, but then the ball came back and he got hit, and he's that short. Yeah, it was a great tackle by Bernie that time. And I think it's a great timeout by Dan Mullen. He wanted his team. It's a big fourth down play here towards the end of the half. 
He wants his guys fresh. He didn't want Alabama to hurry up for this fourth down play. And Najee Harris is back in the game for this play. And they're in the shotgun, so there won't be a quarterback sneak unless Mac Jones comes back up under center. He'll move Forrestall from left to right and back to the middle. And Forrestall takes it on the snap. High school quarterback. Before Trevor Lawrence came along. Nice job by Mac Jones. Watch Mac turn to the bench to see like he's going to do a new play here. Watch him turn to the bench to the right. Like, Coach, do you want something? That's part of the act. And they get the playoff. A little bit of everything, huh? Forrest Dahl. Remember they had a play like that on a quick snap last year against LSU when Devontae beat uh, Stingley on the outside on a play. They looked to the bench and then they quick snapped it. Forrestal playing in his home state from Cartersville, Georgia. Gets the first down. Just outside the Gator 33. Mechie crosses the field in motion. Back to the ground. Back to Najee Harris to the 29. This does two things for this Alabama offense. Brian Robinson started this drive running the ball. And now Najee comes in fresh. They're eating up clock. They're moving the ball in position for at least a field goal, but you know the pressure on this Florida offense every time they get the ball, they know they got to score. Yep. Right now they're 11 down. <laughs> 83 of those 93 rushing yards are Najee Harris, who's behind Mac Jones on second down and six. He gets the handle again, cuts back in the middle and powers his way. Down to the 25, it'll bring up third down again. You know, to Daryl Slayton that time, number 56, the nose tackle for Florida, got some good penetration on the play. Watch inside right here. But short yardage play, pushes inside, pushes that gear back into him, but Najee just kind of dances around it. Nice cut to get back to the middle and get to within a yard. both Robinson and Najee Harris in an eye backfield and it's Robinson straight ahead and he's got the first down you don't see that formation a lot and the clock just keeps ticking away and you finish off a drive nothing more Alabama would like to do is just take this clock right down drive it down the field and not give Florida the ball remember Florida was going to get it to start the second half so you could they were hoping to have one of those two on one things where they yeah. get end of the first half and start the second half but the way this drive is laying out right now they might not even get it Alabama's had the ball almost twice as long as Florida first down at the 23 Jones pumps and fires and has his man Najee Harris touchdown Alabama Najee's second through the air and Jones third of the night I mean, the design on this play is amazing. I mean, when you've got a running back running a hitch slant to the outside, this is a baited play. Watch Najee to the top of the screen, go out, stop, and then run across the field. Out, stop, and then go across the linebacker's face. What a design on a play. Now, you've got to have protection to do that, so give part of it to the offensive line, but what a design. Steve Sarkeesian is dialing up dimes right now, isn't he? There he is, the offensive coordinator. Just about everything has gone right. And Mac Jones to Najee Harris for the second time tonight. 70-yard drive in 13 plays. Six minutes to get to 28 to 10 Alabama. Now the lead goes to 28 to 10. With just under two and a half to go in the half. Najee Harris having himself a night again. I would say so. 19 touches, 16 runs, and three receptions. Not a bad night. Three touchdowns. First two reception touchdowns of the year in his brilliant year. And Alabama will bring it out to the 25. Coming up, Adam Rick and BJ will have first half analysis and highlights from the rest of the championship Saturday on the Geico Halftime Report. Okay, here's where Kyle Trask in this offense has to make a statement. Remember, they get the ball to start the second half. Right. Still plenty of time to go. They've been outclassed here, but it, 
field goal here and a touchdown first drive. They're back in the football game. Early in the game, Pitts with a couple of big catches. Kadarius Tony with the big one, a 51-yard scoring toss, and he's been quiet since. That's him in motion, number one. Trask going deep. Got it to Tony inside the 40. First down, Florida. Well, Jordan Battle was with him the whole time. He had him right in front of him, but a perfect throw. You see number nine, he's the safety, matched up against Tony, but it's a perfect throw right in between the two Alabama safeties. All the way down to the 36-yard line, a pickup of 39. You got the feeling you never have enough points when you're playing Florida or Alabama. True. Trask, this time, first down, or uh, eight-yard toss to Tony. So a 39-yarder to Kadarius, and then eight more. And it's second down to two. Florida has two timeouts remaining, as does Alabama. Fourth time in the last five games, Canarius Tony's gone over 100 yards receiving, including 182 last week in the loss to LSU. Plenty of time for Trask. Plenty of time to throw a dart to Tony. And he lost the ball at the end, but it was blown dead at the one. Tell you, these two guys can throw the football, can't they? Yeah, they can. I mean, when you have the ability, I mean, there's not a college defense alive that can stop these type of throws. Alabama trying to change up their defensive personnel, and now we've got whistles to stop play at the one-yard line. It was the end of the play after that 27-yard pickup to Tony. The ruling on the field was a catch short of the goal line. The previous play is under further review. Still got it, still got it, he still has it. Starting to lose it, but still in his left hand. Oh, is it out or not? No, I think I... he's controlling it. You, you know, with those gloves, I think he has the ball, don't you? at t 5G pylon cam will give us another look from a different angle. He's not down yet. Not down yet. The whistle hasn't blown. Does he lose it? I think he's down, and then it comes out. I think so, too. Looked like he had it in one hand, trying to get it in two. Gene Steratore is along with us with a different look. You know, it feels to me, guys, like as he's reaching, that he still has some control with, like, two or two fingers and a thumb as we look at frame by frame. When that right forearm hits, it's really close, but I believe he's still down by contact. He actually is losing yards at the end. He's moving backwards, almost as forward progress, but it, the ball hits his other arm, does it? Does it not? Call on the field was he was down? Right. Yep. Just inside the two. He's got it. He's Whistle. got it. Whistle down right there. And then his backside is down. I think I think Gene's got this one right on. He's controlling the football. Is that about the yard and a half marker? Three plays, 74 yards. That's the way to answer a touchdown, isn't it? Yeah, go Tony and Tony and some more Tony. 39-yarder, <laughs> an 8-yarder, a 27-yarder. Jeez. And we get the official word. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. So first and goal. This would be huge for Alabama to tack seven on here. And they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. They'd probably like to take a minute and 21 seconds to get this next yard well, just so they don't give it back to Alabama. Well, if they wind the clock, which they will, I would slow down. I would use this play clock all 20 seconds. No reason to hurry up and snap it here. Well, they do, though, and Trask will try to do it himself, and he does. Touchdown, Florida. He did this twice last week in the loss to LSU, and he powers his way in here. Kyle Pitts in the middle of that thing trying to block Will Anderson and doing just enough God job. And when you coach under Nick Saban and your defensive coordinator, you get coached as well. McPherson's extra points. The Up only, and good. The only slight criticism you could have on Florida is they could have taken another 15 to 20 seconds off the clock. 
Well, they'll take the touchdown at any rate. And the big fella for Florida makes it 28 17. The lead cut to 11. And if nothing happens offensively for Alabama in the next 69 seconds, it won't matter. But if Alabama comes back and get more points, as both Gary and I said, Florida's going to be wondering why they didn't take more time to get that score. Billingsley's going to bring it out from one yard deep. Well, he's aggressive. He is. <laughs> Got it out to the 22, maybe the 23. So here's how you do a four-play four drive, okay? You go to Tony. And you throw a strike for 39 and then you put him in the backfield another look right here and he comes out down the sideline right here you sneak him out you got him on malachi moore you run the wheel route inside you throw another strike for 27 and then on first down you just run the quarterback if you're that good a thrower you gotta still take it in yourself so now let's see what alabama does with the next minute and four seconds they've got two timeouts they work from their own 22-yard line. Najee Harris flares out of the backfield. The throw was supposed to be a slant to Devontae Smith, and Brenton Cox got a hand on it. Yeah, six foot six, Brenton Cox playing that defensive end spot. Those guys have to help on those short passes. Leatherwood's got him, but as he backs up, Cox reads the quarterback's head and just makes the swat to the ground. Brent Cox playing in his home state, too, out of Stockbridge, Georgia. Actually played for Georgia before the transfer to Gainesville. Second down at 10. Mac Jones scrambles around, throws on the run, throws a strike to Slade Bolden out to the 48-yard line. Remember, they have two timeouts, Alabama does. Clock will stop on the first down play. Florida's defenders try to get back and get lined up just a three-man front as Jones looking for more. Had some pressure, and Najee Harris, he threw it behind him, hit him in the elbow, incomplete. And Brenton Cox again was applying some heat on number 10. Yeah, I think it was a good job by Cox getting that pressure, and Jones felt it, and he had to throw it just a little bit before Najee was ready on the play. Good pressure by that Florida defensive line. They've swatted one down and they put pressure on the quarterback. Well, everybody has an opportunity to take a big deep breath with 42 seconds left, second down and 10. Just rushing three. Jones down the middle. Got it again, Devontae Smith again. And a first down, Alabama. Boy, when they put Smith in the slot, he is tough to cover. He's got a zone coverage this time, runs right by the linebacker and settles into the zone. They're already in Reichert's field goal range with 30 seconds to go on a half. Jones throws to Forrestall, and Forrestall get out of bounds with 23 seconds to go. Let's recall again that Florida snapped that ball with 19 seconds on the play clock. Look at play clock goes 22, 21, 19. So they could have snapped it under five. So let's call it 15 seconds they could have burned out. So that means instead of having 23, there would be eight seconds left in the half here. Again, if Alabama doesn't score, it won't matter much. But they certainly are in scoring range. Jones. Lobs, oh, we don't have the hands. Yeah, that could have been dangerous, but there wasn't a defender close enough to take that ricochet. Najee Harris again the intended receiver and that one was a misfire by Mac Jones Najee was stopped and I think Mac thought he was going to keep running and that's a third straight play Todd Grantham has rushed just three players Najee Harris tapped his shoulder pads as if to say that's on me I think I should have kept running so here we go we got the tight end of the bottom of the screen and they're running back to the top of the screen the wide receivers are in the middle of the field all three of them they need three yards to get to the 22 for a first down Jones over the middle and got it to Mechie and they're in the red zone down near the 17 and they'll take a timeout here with 13 seconds remaining Mechie ran what you call a jerk route and that's just because they can jerk around that defender he goes out he stops and then he goes it looks like he's running a kind of a stop in the middle watch him come stop and then go to the outside 
Comes in there, pauses, and it goes. That's right it. over the head of the umpire on the throw from Mac Jones. Really? The umpire won. Nice athletic duck. play, right, by the umpire. <laughs> no, no doubt about it. Tomorrow, Josh Groban, Miranda Lambert, Megan Trainer, Leslie Odom Jr., and Andrea Botelli celebrate the greatest gift of the season, family. A home for the holidays tomorrow on CBS. Let's compare our quarterbacks again as we continue to look at these two guys who are Heisman Trophy candidates without a doubt, and Mac Jones is having a half. Yeah, and Alabama has run 50 plays. The strategy that Steve Sarkeesian came in to try to wear this defense, he said we can wear them out in the, the, second, the third and fourth quarter. It'll pay off. 13 seconds time for two plays. From the 17, Jones loads over the middle, compete. Najee Harris, touchdown! Najee Harris again. Alabama should not have had time to run this play. Poor clock management by Florida. Najee comes out of the backfield, goes outside, and skittles into the middle. Watch this. Boom, gets inside. Defend. Linebacker should not get beat inside on that play. And Debiato does. Number 11, the linebacker just lets Najee get inside and look at that athleticism to score his fourth touchdown of the game. Six seconds remaining. It only took a minute and two seconds to go 78 yards. And Najee Harris is going, you know, you guys talking about the Heisman and all that. Yeah, yeah. A little love for me. I could take a few votes. <laughs> well. The consolation prize might have to be the Doak Walker Award that goes to the best running back in the country. But if there's a lot of guys better than him, I haven't seen him this year. Record in for the point after. Up and good. What a drive. 78 yards and eight plays. And this is the second Najee spin for a touchdown. Remember the flare pass to the left side and this time inside and... Boy, when Najee came back for his year and didn't turn pro, Alabama knew they had a special one there. We still got a half to go, but number 10 is starting to make a name as a possible Heisman guy. Everybody waits around, or the voters should wait around until these championship games are over before you make a choice. Well, I tell you, if Najee gets any votes, it may look a little bit about something we looked up today. When's the last time three players got votes? Well, all the way back to 73, Hicks, Archie Griffin, and Randy Gratishar. John Capoletti won it from yes, Penn State. Yes, it kind of shared those votes. Could that happen this year? Alabama, six first-half possessions, five touchdowns, four of them to that guy, one way or another. Wow. Alabama has scored 35 points or more in their own ongoing record 24 straight games. And Kyle Trask knows that his work is cut out for him in the second half. He's done his job. And a squid kick. And at the 31 yard line. Still got six seconds. Well, as you started off the broadcast, Ness. Nick Saban said you can't win with just good defense. Here, <laughs> here we go. Obviously, we're watching it right here. This Alabama defense might be pretty good, but sometimes good offense beats good defense. And the only hiccup in the whole first half for Alabama offensively was that pass that really Mac Jones pretty much stuck it into his tight end, but it was swiped away on the interception. So what does Florida do with six seconds? A, a, quick, a quick out and then a bomb, a Hail Mary to the end zone? Looks like they're going to throw. Yep. Like a five-yard out, maybe. Tony is in the slot on the right side. And they're not going to get a throw away. Will Anderson with the sack that will end the first half. The true freshman, number 31. He started out the year on fire, had maybe a little bit of a lull, and now he's playing good football again. I'll tell you, this Alabama team on turf really looks fast, don't they? They do. And let's check in with Jamie. Coach, will you take us down to the goal line on this last touchdown drive? Walk us through the decision-making in terms of clock management. 
off run. We're trying to score. I mean, we got to score to keep up with these guys. So, uh, you know, I'm not sitting there trying to, like, make it a one-play deal to score against them. they got an excellent defense. Is your offense feeling the pressure every time Alabama puts one on the board? No, we're just trying. We're running our plan right there. You know, we've had some chances to make stops defensively. You know, we, we, had, we created a turnover and fumbled it right back. I think we have three third-down penalties, uh, four to keep them on the field. You know, we've gotten off the field a bunch of times and we've just stopped ourselves. So that's kind of disappointing because our guys are making some plays and then we're making the mistakes. And you, you can't give an offense like that, you know, five extra opportunities. That, hey. That's not going to happen. Absolutely. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, as you saw, they don't trail much. When they trail, they tend to lose. They're trailing right now, 35-17, end of the half. We'll be back with a Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway after this message from your local station. Young. And we welcome you back. The SEC Championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper. Just about set to head into the third quarter. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl. That first half, Najee Harris, 200 yards of total offense and four touchdowns. Gary and Mac Jones has been brilliant. He has. I mean, and we, we all talked about this game, you know, a chance for the playoffs, chance to win a national championship. You have the SEC champion. And then the two quarterbacks making a pitch for the Heisman. I got to say, Mac Jones is pitching it pretty good. He's you? pitching it all over he the place to a lot of different guys. And he's got four touchdown passes. We saw him with five touchdown passes in the Iron Bowl. We did. So he's having an unbelievable night again for number 10. And what they're playing for. Now, among many things, the hardware SEC championship trophy down in the corner of the end zone. That, and as Gary said, much more. Because if Alabama keeps playing like this, they'll be the number one seed in the college football I, I can hear, rankings come out. You can hear the AM team going, anybody want to play Alabama? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and Kadarius Tony raises his hand to take the fair catch at Florida will start from the 25 as we go to Jamie. Well, if you were down here, you could say if Alabama keeps playing like this on offense, Nick Saban would be pretty happy. He said consistency has been key, and he said that first half for an offense as consistent as he had seen all season. However, defensively, Kadarius Tony said he is killing us, moving him all over the field. We've got to find a way to stick one guy on him and keep tracks of him. In terms of 84 versus one, one is the one that's giving him trouble. Yep. He has for sure, and he's in motion right now on first down. They almost predicted that when they talked to us. Trask completes it. Jacob Copeland's first catch of the night, and it's good for a first down. As we take a look at some of our first half trends, and these are the trends. Najee Harris, three receiving, one rushing. Devontae Smith over 100 and a touchdown and a fumble recovery after the Florida interception when Mechie made the tackle and Kadarius Tony. There he is, 151 total yards and the touchdown, a 51-yard scoring strike from Trask, who needs more of that here in the second half. That one's complete. Trayvon Grimes. I think it's a nice start for the Florida offensive game plan at halftime. They knew that Alabama was going to go in there and work on stopping number one. So what do they do? Open up the second half. They throw it to 15 Copeland and eight Grimes. Just giving a message to this defense. The Alabama defenses will use all our weapons. Emory Jones had the longest run of the first half, a 17-yard pickup, and he's in there right now on second down and five. The two Florida running backs each have one carry for one yard each. And now Jones, and he's got a first down again. So, two carries, two first downs for him in the game. Kind of the offense that uh, Dan Mullen is known for, a passing quarterback who can run. You know, he, we mentioned already, did it with Tebow here in this football game, did it with Dak Prescott. Nick Fitzgerald was more just of a runner at quarterback, but Kyle Trask, he's had to revamp the offense to do what he does best, and that's pitch from that pocket right there. From midfield, going deep on the far sideline, and it's caught, and it's Grimes, and he's gone. Touchdown, Florida. Trayvon Grimes, a 50-yard strike from Kyle Trask, and that's just what the Florida doctor ordered him to start the third quarter. And Ness, Patrick Sertan was in perfect phase on this play. He's got him covered, he's got him covered, and he doesn't. Beautiful going up and timing the football and going to some other weapons to show this Alabama defense that we've got other guys that can make plays. Jeez, what a nice throw and catch by Grimes. 
McPherson in for the point after. And it's up and good. Well, if you're going to play bump and run coverage, you sometimes just have to tip your hat. And that time you tip your hat to that throw and catch. So a minute and a half into the third quarter, the Gators right back in things. Gets right back in business to open up the third quarter on a 75-yard drive and just four plays. Trayvon Grimes matching his career-long catch, uh, season-long catch, I should say, a 50-yard touchdown. Time for our GMC Game Changer. Well, we've seen all these plays once, but it's always nice to watch a pure athlete make these cuts and show the kind of build he has, catching, running the ball, catching it in the backfield. You may think you have them, but you don't. A well-designed play, at times schemed well by Steve Zarkeesian, and then at the end of the half, deeks outside and beats the linebacker inside for that score right before it. He did it every which way you could. That first half, some pretty stuff. Championship records in this game. Just uh, feel, Harris, we got a long way to go. Doesn't it feel like Florida could gain so much, you know, confidence just by getting a stop? Here's a little flip to Devontae Smith, and he gets cartwheeled out to the 29-yard line. That'll be a reception for him, a pickup of about four. Brad Stewart upended him at the end of the run. You hear coaches talk about, can we give our offense four or five stops a game? Now, they almost had one stop with the interception, but they fumbled it back every time that Alabama's had the football in this game, they've scored touchdowns. Najee Harris went from being a wide receiver to the bottom of your screen to coming back to join Mac Jones with the throw goes the other way to Mechie. Mechie got a block from Devontae Smith. Mechie down the sideline. Big gainer again. Run out of Browns by Snyder, but first down Alabama. I've told this story before about Tom Mechie. It was a year ago when Alabama had all four receivers, NFL receivers, Waddle, Judy, Ruggs, and Smith. And Steve Sarkeesian came in talking about Mechie that we're going to have to find a place to get him on the field. I went, what? <laughs> well, he's got a place now. Yep. Mac Jones approaching 300 yards in the air. Alabama back in Florida territory. First down. Jones scanning the field and he throws it behind the intended receiver, Najee Harris. And that was some good defense by Florida. They tried a gimmick play that time, and it was defended well. well stars tonight, Trask, a couple in the air, one on the ground. Najee Harris has four. Mac Jones has four scoring tosses. Kadarius Tony has been a nightmare for the Alabama defense. And then there's Devontae Smith just having a normal and Devontae even Smith night. Kyle Pitts does not have a lot of catches and yards. He's still a threat and allows other people to get open. Harris. Five more for Najee. Third down. Now yeah, can they get a third down stop for the Florida defense? Championship record of 35 points. And as we mentioned, 24 straight games with at least that many. And we've still got a whole bunch of football left. Brad Stewart, who's played a good game from that star position in the secondary, is the man down for Florida. SEC Championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper is sponsored by Bright House Financial. Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea. USAA. And by Wheels Up. You see the skyline nighttime on a Saturday in Atlanta. Tonight on CBS Sports Network. Join the inside college football crew for an update on all the championship matchups and all the top headlines of the day. The headline here is that Alabama has done almost nothing wrong tonight, and yet Florida is hanging in there, only trailing by 11, and a third down coming up again for the tie. way Florida scored the last two drives, you got a feeling if they could get a stop, they could get this thing tightened up real tight. They come up to the line in a hurry, a third down and five. Najee Harris, and they get a stop. Najee Harris only got about a yard and a half. They went Amari Bernie made the tackle. Excuse me, Brad. They went on balance line with like a quick snap right away. Put, look at only one defense. Offensive lineman to the right of the center. Good defensive stop by Florida. 
seem, you know, it's too far to try a field goal and too close to punt. They're going to go for it. Going for it on fourth down. Alabama only two out of five fourth down conversions, but one was tonight. So three out of six. Fourth and three. Big play here. Jones on a crossing route. Yeah. Devontae Smith, and he's brought down by Kair Ilum. Big stop, finally, for the Gator defense. I'll tell you what Kair Elam did is he sidestepped the pick route by Alabama that time. They tried to rub him, and he dodged it. Watch coming across. Watch him get by the Alabama defender. Oh, Mechie could not get him. He was able to get the tackle and get the stop. Very few guys can bring down number six in the open field. That was a huge play by Elam, and it gives it back to his offense at the 37-yard line. As we said, Pitts only has two catches for 25 yards, and this Florida offense is humming. Elam, a Thorpe Award finalist, and he showed it there. Trash down the middle, and he overshot Pitts. Pitts had a step, and he just missed him. College football playoff top 10. Clemson won the ACC tonight with a win over Notre Dame. Ohio State beat Northwestern to win the Big Ten. Oklahoma over Iowa State in a really good game to win the Big 12 again for, what, the sixth time in a row, I think. And here, the SEC championship. Two teams that have been in this game 13 times each. Alabama has the edge in the 10 games they squared off. Kyle Trask on a throw and a penalty marker. There's been very few. Malik Davis, the running back on the play, and Dylan Moses, I think, is going to have the interference. He went back to the wheel route. Yep. It hurt Georgia so badly in that game. Moses in that middle linebacker this time matched up with the running back. He's going to cross the formation. That means Moses has him. Pass interference on the defense, number 32. 15-yard penalty, first down. So the running back's going to come across, so that means the middle linebacker has him on the play. He looked a little indecisive, and then yep, too late. Him. And, and he, it's a good thing he did, because it would have been a touchdown if he didn't. Only the second Alabama penalty, but it gives Florida first down in tied territory at the 48. Another beautifully designed play by Florida. Blitz coming off the corner. Trask knows it's coming, and down he goes. And it's going to be Christian Harris that gets to him. He's lined up over just inside the third receiver to the wide side of the field. And as Ness said, nobody even touched him. Coming right off the edge right there. Kyle Trask says, uh-oh. Yep. And that backs it up to the Florida side of the field. Second down and 13. They like to put Tony in the third inside spot so he can match up with a linebacker. That linebacker would be Christopher Allen, but it's Trask. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe one more yard. And third down coming up. See what Dan Mullen and his offensive coordinator Brian Johnson have cooked up here on third down and nine at the 10 minute mark of the third quarter. Davis switches sides. Trask in the shotgun, long count. Comes up, wants to fire, throw short, almost intercepted. He tried to get it to Malik Davis, and Brian Branch was actually closer. Interesting decision for Dan Mullen here. He ran the ball on second and long. I thought he was thinking four down territory, but didn't get anything enough, let's say. And then on third down, didn't get anything. So he's forced to at least line up in punt formation. And that brings out Jacob Finn. We haven't had a lot of punts. Devontae Smith will go back deep. Alabama's playing defense safe here. Looking for the fake. Finn. End over end punt. Devontae Smith just watches it go out of bounds around the 11, I think. Oh. Actually going to be at the 9. So good job by Finn. 9.35 remaining, third quarter. 
Alabama with the lead and the ball when we come back. Thirty-five, twenty-four, Alabama with a lead with 9.35 to go in the third quarter. And again, 24 straight games of 35 points or more. That's their own streak that they just keep adding to it every week. Now we test your knowledge with today's Aflac trivia question. Doing what they've done. It's the last team to hold the tide under 35. Let you think that one over. Meanwhile, it's first and ten. Alabama inside their own ten. Play fake to Harris. Jones loads up at his own goal line. Just going to throw short to Najee Harris. Wide open field. He cuts back. Has a first down. Picks up about 15. Just easy pitch and catch and run after the catch. <laughs> I just think back to remember the old Alabama teams, uh, maybe pre Lane Kiffin, where this would surely be a running situation. But boy, everything has changed. Lane started it, and uh, now look at what they do. I mean, they are just a wide open football team, aren't they? You missed those nine to six games, did you? <laughs> no, this is good enough. That Army Navy game every year to make up for it. to Najee Harris on the ground. Back to another nice game. Out to the 29. And Miller Forrestal was uh, limping off the field on the previous play. Let's see what happens here. He's been dealing with both yeah, ankle and shoulder problems really since the Arkansas game, and I think it's the ankle that gave him the issue there. He had a quarterback sneak, though. He remembered how to do it, didn't he? Yes, he did. Down the middle, on the run, Devontae Smith. And Alabama right back in Florida territory. Yeah, too much space this time. Big cushion, almost a 10-yard cushion. Smith looks in, and it was like uh, Tua was throwing this one. <laughs> when he has those old slants, Tua, you could throw a slant better than anybody I've ever seen. Throwing him for the Dolphins now. And well, how about this for Alabama? I mean, uh, Mac Jones... Played behind two quarterbacks that are starting in the NFL right now. Jalen Hurts and Tua Tungabaloa. Talking about guys playing in the NFL. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Amari Cooper, and now Devontae Smith adds his name to the list as far as single season receptions in Alabama history. Brian Robinson back in there. Broken tackle. And got it to the 41. Looks like we're going to get a hold on Leatherwood here. Well, we haven't talked about him since the beginning of the game, so... Holding on the offense, number 70, 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. He'll be another in the long line of number one draft choices from Alabama. See him right here. One of the captains of this game, the senior, all 312 pounds of him. See, that's the effort that Zachary Carter produced on that play. He produced the hold. He didn't give up on the play. He kept fighting, finally got to the outside and forced the hold. In a long yardage situation. There haven't been too many of those tonight for Alabama, but this one's on first down, first and 20. Jones looking left the whole way. He goes out, Devontae Smith, and he gets half of it back before Stewart made the tackle. And yeah, did good, good tackle there because Devontae would have got about another eight yards on the plate. Again, from the slot position, I mean, it's a long night for Brad Stewart, but he's holding his own. I mean, it's not going to, you can't stop this guy, but you can't let him get those extra yards, and he comes up and makes the tackle. Devontae Smith has more yards after catch than anybody else in the country, and it's not even close. So just being able to bring him down after a gain of 10 is pretty good. That's Billingsley, and he's dropped for a loss. That seemed to take a long time, didn't it? Yeah, too long. Zach Carter made the stop. One thing we know about this Gator defense is they can run sideline to sideline, and that just seemed to take a long time. Never got the edge blocked. Good job again by Carter, number 17, defeating the block on the end man on the line of scrimmage and forcing it wide and getting the big stop on the play. That's a 290-pound movement that fast, as you said, sideline to sideline. Third down and long. Alabama third in the country in long yardage, eight-plus situations. They've got a bunch here. Jones. 
Throws out in the flat. Completes it to Tennyson. And he's upended before he can get to the sticks. It's fourth down. Well, third and long, you want the ball to go to the tight end on a check down. So you know you're playing good defense. Again, just a three-man rush. Nothing open. Dump it off. That's one of those plays where everybody comes back and says it's exactly the way we wanted to play the defense. Charlie Scott is the loneliest guy on the Alabama roster because he's finally going to get his hands on the football to punt. And be careful who you punt it to on the other end. Scott's first punt. Tony just gets out of the way and it's going to make it to the end zone. So with 5-16 remaining in the third quarter, Florida trails by 11, but they've got number 11 at the controls when we come back. Right, we go back to Atlanta. All right, Zook, thanks. 35-24 here in the SEC championship game in Atlanta. Asked you the Aflac trivia question a little bit earlier. We talked about 24 straight games of 35-plus. Who's the last team? To hold the tide under 35, Clemson in the championship game. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. And Clemson put a hurting on Notre Dame to get their payback today and probably punch their ticket to the playoff again as Trask comes up firing after the 25. Given ground to try to gain ground. And, and now the ball is out. And who's got it? Big scramble. Alabama says they have it. And they that play could have been blown dead almost. The, ref, the official's holding up second down, though. His two fingers. I'm a little confused. It looks like forward progress, but then he fights and gets away. Down. The ball is ripped out. Obviously, no, it wasn't so obvious. It looks like maybe late the Florida player came and got it. That ball was out there. And then it squirts out the back side, maybe? Wow. Florida trying to snap it. They get it snapped. Second down and 17. Long ball. Jump ball. Pitts can't get it. Double coverage there. Job and Daniel Wright. And that's how you play the deep ball right there. You've got a six foot six receiver. If you don't get into his body and allow him to leap, you're not going to cover him. This time, Joe just is in perfect phase, backs up into him. And then, with the help of the safety coming across, there's no way Pitts can catch that football. Now it's third down at 17. Kyle Trask, you've got to be careful here. They need to get it all the way to the 30 for a first down. Empty backfield. You don't want to misfire right now. Better off putting. Unless you can do that to Pitts for the first down. Pick up a 20. Yeah, you don't throw for 400 yards in all these football games without being able to pick apart a three-man zone defense. And this time, just overrun that time by the linebacker, Dylan Moses, number 32. You got to see the receiver. You just can't cover grass. You got to look around. He let Pitts run right by him. So Pitts targeted twice so far. Once was incomplete. That was a big first down. Here comes everybody. Trask lets it fly. And looking for a flag and here they come yep he had dylan moses again right from the snap you knew kyle trask was going to go on that it was man-to-man -man coverage he had the linebacker out there look at he sees number 32 on this guy watch him go hitch and go naquan wright was the man he was throwing it toward and dylan moses with the penalty pass interference on the defense number 32 spot foul automatic first down I will say this about Dylan Moses. He was out of phase there twice, but those two penalties saved two touchdowns. He made the mistake both times, but he didn't give up touchdowns. Great call again by this Florida offense. They keep you guessing. First down at the 45. Tony in motion. Let's see if Trask goes his way. Looks the other way. Down the middle. Traylon Grimes again. First down, Florida. Well, that time, Brian Branch, number 14, is in phase. But then as he turns, he falls down, trips, and allows Grimes to make the catch. A pickup of 25. 
to the Alabama 30. Another perfect throw again. And Trask closing in on 300 yards through the air. Kyle, Tra Kyle Trask right now say, hold your Heisman votes just a little longer. And he gets it to Tony on the ground and only a two or three yard pickup. Chris Allen stayed home to make the hit on number one. Balls out. Looked like Alabama had, what, three or four guys around it? And it just ended up being second down. I, I didn't get that one. I think they said the Florida guy recovered it. That's the only thing I can imagine. And a running back with positive yardage. Naquan Wright. You know, Ness had mentioned earlier is we look at that play one more time, and is it Nacon Wright that makes the recovery? And there's some blue and orange gloves down there, I guess. Yep. Wow. Doesn't matter right now. The ball's at the 22 of Alabama. And third down again. <laughs> Trask going to take it himself, and he's got the first down. You can just see that one coming. He's not the most mobile quarterback, but he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. And he picks up the first down. And, and who would? An opportunity to get a first down in this situation and uh, keep this Alabama defense reeling. This has the feel now of this Alabama Ole Miss game early in the year where both teams are just scoring almost every time they have the ball. Eighth play of the drive in the red zone at the Alabama 19. Kyle Trask hesitates, throws late, out of bounds, just threw it away. Jacob Copeland was the closest guy, but he never got his feet set, and he just got rid of that thing. Pitts with 45 yards, Tony 153 and a touch, and Grimes 80 and a score so far. Those are the two big guys, 84 and number one. Second down and 10. Four, el no, four algebra receivers to the right on this play. Pitts is in line as a tight end with his hand in the ground this time. Trask, the quick throw comes the other way. Completes it to Naquan right again out of the backfield. Or the guy that came out of the backfield, I should say. Ness, you were talking about the running backs in that Georgia game on those wheel routes. In that game, they caught 10 passes for 211 yards. The tight ends, remember Kyle Pitts went out, caught five for 110, meeting the running back and the tight ends caught balls for 321 yards in that game. Shows you how this offense can morph to different guys. Trask for the third down and four, empty backfield. They've converted a couple of third downs in this drive, and he's going to keep it again, and he's going to get it again. <laughs> So if you're going to play quarterback in this offense, as you say, you got to be willing. And Kyle Trask is willing. He's doing a great job of it. Just making first downs. You don't need 30-yard runs the way he throws the ball. But to be able to pick up a first down is huge. And now Wright and Tony flank him in the backfield, and now they both disappear. Pitts shifts to the slot. First and goal at the nine for the Gators. It's going to run it again. And Trask down to the three. This obviously is a check with me type of situation for Trask. He looks at the box and Nick says right there, you don't have the box covered. If the box doesn't have enough numbers into it, he runs the quarterback draw. Second down and goal. Remember, he's got five offensive linemen in front of him. If it's empty, he looks and there's only four guys there. He goes, I'm running. At the three yard line. Touchdown, Florida, Naquan Wright. Is this a beautiful drive or not? 12 plays. I mean, they just kept this Alabama defense off balance the whole way. The quarterback runs, throwing it to the running backs, and then getting that running play to end. They're going to go for just one here, just make it a four-point game instead of going for two early. I like that they're not chasing the two-point play here. McPherson, the point after. Up and good. 
80 yards, and as Gary said, 12 plays, just under five minutes. And Naquan Wright, only his second rushing touchdown of the season. But, oh, baby, was it a big one. Wow. Uh, the capital of Georgia here in Atlanta. And I don't know what the price of the ticket was for the 16 or 17,000 here, but they're getting their money's worth. Alabama has cut it to a four-point lead. I feel like this is the first pressure drive that Alabama's had in the football game right now. And they'll start it from the 25 with 18 seconds remaining. Remember, after the fumble, it was long yardage for this Florida offense, then third and long. Alabama decides to just run three. Kyle Pitts, only his third catch of the game, gets in that seam, overrun by the linebacker. Look him up. Don't just run by him. And that's what caused that first down huge play in that drive. How about these two guys? Yeah, how about them? Coming in, we knew that both would shine as they've done all season, all and they haven't disappointed us. Yep. Najee Harris behind Mac Jones. If it's a handoff, it might be the last play of the quarter. It is not play action. Jones comes back complete to Forrestall. Forrestall lost the ball at the end. Was he blown dead? I think so. They blew Although the he whistle covered real it anyway. late. They blew the whistle after he got it. Forrestall has no wheels here. That ankle's bothering me. He could not catch that ball and really turn on any juice there. I think he was down, though. Yeah, he was down. They're going to spot that back where he first went down. At the 24-yard line yes. to end the third quarter. Florida, though, 14 points in that quarter. Alabama, none. 35-31 at the end of three. We'll return to Atlanta right after this message. And a word from your local station. Don't go away. The SEC Championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper takes us into the fourth quarter. 35 31 Alabama. Mac Jones comes up fire and Devontae Smith going to be close to a first down about a yard shy. Well, we welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nessler, Gary Daniels, and Jamie Erdahl down on the field. Our crew has traveled this conference <laughs> all season long. Fight to get here. These teams have fought to get here and they haven't disappointed us. No, absolutely. I mean, this Florida defense in the second half you know, they didn't stop them one time. It looks like Florida, Alabama could score it well, and they just keep playing. They just keep playing. They get two stops both times that Alabama's had the ball. And Florida, 14 points in that quarter. So that uh, big advantage that Alabama had dissipated over the course of that 15 minutes. And so now we've got 14 and a half to crown an SEC champion. Everything we had hoped for and then some. Mac Jones loads, fires, completes it to Mechie. First down, Alabama. It was man-to-man -man coverage to the outside in that comeback route. Very easy throw for a quarterback. A lot of space, a lot of room for that receiver to adjust the ball. And on that one, he didn't have to adjust at all. And a pickup of 20. Remember... Steve Sarkeesian talked about tiring out this Florida defense that it would pay off in the fourth quarter. Will it? A four-touchdown performance by Mac Jones so far on a 30-for-39 night. And now Najee Harris. A hurdle and a first down, and he's still going. He's done this for the last three years, <laughs> and the hurdles just get prettier. It's like he waits for the opportunity, gets to the edge, sees the DB, and he anticipates he'll go low, and he was right. So a 20-yard throw to Mechie, a 19-yard romp by Najee Harris. And Alabama, Jalen Waddle saying, that's what I'm talking about. He would like to make it back for the college football playoffs if that ankle ends up being good enough. Meanwhile, at the 26th, Jones, play fake, look out from behind, throws, oh wow, how did he tuck that one in to Billingsley? I, I thought that ball had the potential to be an intercepted when he threw it, and Billingsley comes up with it. The flag to boot, 
It's going to be either holding or pass interference. Not going to matter because they'll take the catch. Elam slow to get up. Here's another look. Billingsley going across the field. It's the same play that they ran. Remember when Billingsley was wide open for that touchdown? Same play, but this time Florida covers it perfectly. Wow. And how did it get in there? What a play. That one had eyes. Yes, it did. Elam still down after making the catch. On a high school. Take a look at our game recap between number one Alabama and number seven Florida. Najee Harris drew first blood. Back came the Gators. Kadarius Tony, 51 yard touchdown. That made it 7 7. Najee, a huge night. Four touchdowns in the first half, including that one. And a big third quarter, two scores for Florida to make it 35-31, where we are now. And three hours ago, on a beautifully narrated piece by CCH Pounder of NCIS New Orleans, she told us about the history of almost three decades of this championship game. And we've come down to the last 13 minutes of this one, and it has been a thriller. Yeah, and if you're Florida right now, you have to figure out a way to stop number 22. At least be aware that they've been going to him in this red zone every time. He's right behind Mac Jones in the pistol set here. And here he comes, and he goes down. No gain. Nice job by Ventrell Miller, the middle linebacker. Somewhat of a run blitz that time. They played run when he went in that uh, pistol formation. He played run and attacked that line of scrimmage and uh, made the play beautifully. Second down and 10. Eighth play of the drive coming up at the Florida 12 yard line. They can get a first down at the two. Harris going wide, broke one tackle, cuts back up and diving. Only a yard shy of the first down. It'll be third and short. I think it's Dibiate almost had him that time. I yep. thought they were allowed to see that streak of 11 go across there. I thought he had him, and again, he just kind of jumps out of the way when they go for his ankles there. Third down and one. Florida had time to get their goal line or short yardage defense on the field. Extra lineman in for Alabama. Again, an eye backfield, and it's the tailback. Najee Harris, he's got a first down, but not a touchdown. He gets just outside the one. That time, Deontay Brown, number 65, the left guard, pulled out and gets the kick out this time, and he runs right behind his left guard on the play. Let's see if they leave that same lineup in there. Looks like it. First and goal. Three trips to the red zone, three touchdowns for the Tide so far. Again, Robinson, the up man in the eye. Najee Harris, the tail. Najee Harris. Not quite inside the one. They even have a linebacker, Josh McMillan, in there at the fullback spot. A lot of beef on the field and a linebacker at fullback. So far, the Gators are giving up inches, not touchdowns. That close. Wow. Can't get closer. No, you can't. Ventrell Miller is down, and that has stopped play here. Another look at the goal line plunge by Najee Harris. Oh, that's very close, isn't it? I don't know. I don't see anything down from that look. With a pile up like that, we might never see his legs. We'll be back. Away, they reviewed the last play by Najee Harris. The call has been overturned. It's a touchdown, his fifth of the night. So we weren't sure if any part of his body was down. It came real close. Obviously, the official said he got to the line, but we did find an angle that his legs were in the air to prove. Watch from this side. You see he's completely in the air. He puts his hand down and scores. And he's going, Mom, yeah. I'm having quite a night. Yeah. 67 through the air, 131 on the ground, and five touchdowns. 
extra point is good. Now we'll give you another look from behind, and I think this is the one that shows it best. As Gary said, his legs never touched anything because they were on an opposing tackler's body as he does the spin right here. He's still airborne. Nothing is touched. His left hand goes down, and his right hand goes across the goal line. Good job by the replay official piecing that together and getting that touchdown that was clear, well, not clearly, but he made it by a couple inches, and he deserved it. So after we said they should stop 22, that ain't easy, easy no. to say, but they did give it to him four straight plays. As Butch Jones giving him the shoulder rub. Butch is about to become, after the college football playoff, the new head coach at Arkansas State. Wow, this guy's good. All these guys are pretty good. Yeah. And Kyle Trask knows now he's got a battle back to him in another 11 point deficit. That's a good picture right there. Waddle in the background, Mac Jones sitting next to Devontae Smith. And the kickoff. The Darius Tony. Fair catch. With 11.29 to go. Heisman hopefuls coming into the weekend. You can make a case, I guess, for all of those guys. I think Justin Fields, with the game he had today, can go yep. away. Ian Book needed to win, so I think it's down to these four. And the way Mac Jones and Kyle Trask are playing right now, I mean, uh, Trevor Lawrence had, obviously, great football player. Maybe was a little behind coming into it, but uh, I don't know. This last vote right here might be the key. Yep. Who's got the ball last might be the key. Tony in motion. Yes. Trask set to throw, and he is not going to get it, and he fumbled it as well, and Alabama's got it at the 10. Tim Smith after the hit by Will Anderson. Coming off this right side right here, gets by John Delance, number 56. Once he gets there, they're taught to go for the football nowadays. He goes and tackles that football. And as Ness said, Tim Smith, the true freshman, he knows a football, and he goes and finds it this time. Two true freshmen making the play, and Anderson says, I got it. We got it back. Another sack, and now it's danger time, unless Florida can somehow make a stop on Alabama. First and goal at the 10. I don't know what he's telling them, but if I was the head coach, I'd be saying you can't block him and throw him at the same time. <laughs> That's right. Mac Jones under center comes up to the line. Najee Harris gets the call. And he'll get a yard. That's all. James Houston made the tackle. minutes remaining this Florida defense has to hold them to a field goal I mean to be a two touchdown game touchdown would really hurt them obviously second and goal at the nine Jones rolls, fires, and in and out of the hands of Devontae Smith. And you won't see that happen yeah, very often. A little high that time was a fastball to the outside that kept rising, it seems to me. Jones has got him to the outside. A little pick play, and whoo! The baby was by him by the time he got his hands up. So third down and goal. And they hold him to three. Alabama, a 10-minute advantage, closing in on 600 yards of offense. Jones, oh. Devontae Smith holds on to this one. He took a shot from Brad Stewart, and it's fourth down. You got to go field goal here, make it a 14-point game. You'd love to tack on the touchdown, but that time, this Florida defense played the goal line. They backed up, made that pass happened in front of him and then the strong tackle to force the three so Mac Jones to hold Will Reichert hasn't missed any kicks this year be they 
field goals or extra points. This will be a 20 yard attempt. Up and perfect. 45 31. Good stop. Good gutsy stop by that Florida defense that time. A two touchdown game, a fumble, but then Florida holds them to a field goal, 45-31. All next Saturday on CBS, 45-31, just under 10 minutes remaining. Look at the numbers, most passing yards in SEC championship game history. Mac Jones has that now. <laughs> He's got another 400-yard passing game some good names to be connected with right there on that graphic. and that's his fourth 400 plus passing outing of the season for Alabama including four touchdown passes tonight Alabama 10 points in the last 96 seconds and now Florida's got to come up with an answer Tony will call for the fair catch don't forget coming up later in the game before we're done anyway the play of the game Presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Two touchdowns back. And now it's time for Kyle Trask and company to come up with something. Yeah, and unless they have one of those, you know, four play drives in a minute or two, I think if you're thinking if you're Florida, you'd be lucky to get the ball three more times in this football game. You know, I not so kiddingly said to you a couple hours ago, first team to 45 probably wins. Might be right on. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Trask throws late across the middle, but does complete it out to the 31-yard line for Kyle Pitts. Christian Harris came free again, but he was just a little farther away and couldn't get there, and Trask saw him coming the whole way and threw right off his head. Second down at four. Every snap important now for Florida to try to make up a two-touchdown deficit. There is Tully in motion. Trask gonna go deep and he's got his man and it's Pitts first down Florida at the 37 of Alabama well he's attached this time Tony goes in motion and that shifts the Alabama defense he's inside he reads the double zone he's got a linebacker on him in Harris and another strike from Kyle Trask 31 yard pickup they'll Put, spot it at the 38 putting on a show here throwing the football both of these guys are Trask goes to the corner, in and out of the hands. Would have been to Copeland for a big gainer, but it's broken up by Josh Job. So if you want to play big time football, you want to play corner, this is what you got to do all game. <laughs> Cut your heart in your throat as you're running down there, and you know the fate's coming right over your head, and you got to stick your hand out and try to find that football. Second and ten. I'm gonna keep it on the ground, and that's going nowhere. No gain. Dylan Moses makes a stop on Davis. I think he fumbled the ball at the end of it, too. Third down. The running backs for Florida haven't gotten a lot of work tonight unless it's as an intended receiver. Dylan Moses made the tackle, and then as he starts to go down, it's punched out that time by Barmore. Florida slowly getting into their position, their wide receivers. Now they're all set. On third down and nine. Pitts on a crossing route. Incomplete Job again on the coverage. Call and pass here comes a flag. One-on-one -on -one to the opposite side. The tight end against your corner. Physical, physical. Gets his hands on him. Holding on the defense, gets number 28, against an eligible pass receiver when the pass went beyond the line. That's a 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So the drive stays alive by penalty. It's a gutsy call by that official. He's on that sideline by Alabama, and the whole Alabama bench <laughs> erupted right <laughs> into his face. Nick was out there, everybody was out there, and he stuck to it. I admire that type of call. You see it? Call it. First down at the 26. 
Empty backfield again. Trask loads it, releases it. The ball is knocked away by Jordan Battle. Alabama plays their combo zones. They read releases. That's how they decide who they've got. This time, Battle sees the crossing route and jumps it. Instead of just sitting in the zone and letting the guy catch it, he looks up somebody and makes the play. Knocked it away from Trayvon Grimes and forces second down and 10. Just under eight to go in regulation. Tony again in motion. Can they get him the ball? Trask is looking the other way. Goes the other way. And Grimes, the intended receiver, and Job again was with him. Same routine on two. Joe Page's in there. He's got Grimes the big tall. You saw what he did before on one of these plays. Little hand fighting going yep. on. And I think they're going to let him get away with that one. I think they should have let him get away with it. Both guys are pushing off. It was a, if it was a catchable ball, he could have still got there. If you don't grab, you have a chance of getting away with it. Third down and ten. Two down territory, you would assume here. They need to get to the 16-yard line for a first down. Trask crossing rock, right, got it to Pitts. Pitts is still running. Pitts is almost in at the one-yard line. Alabama blitz that time. An outside technique. They did not get to him. Five-man rush. Get rid of it to your tight end slash wide receiver slash H-back slash nobody can cover me player. Wouldn't be surprised if Trask does this himself. He does. Is he there? Not quite. As they unpile the bodies, it'll be inside the one. Trask wanted to go with a hurry up offense. He got him set as good as he could or as quickly as he could. Dylan Moses fights off the block that time and makes the play. What a play by Dylan Moses. Stuffs it and then stuffs the quarterback. Beautiful play. Seven minutes, and it ticks under seven. Ninth play of the drive coming up. The player was short of the goal line. The previous play is under further review. And we're going to take another look at it. I don't think the ball ever got across the line. But we'll make sure. Kyle Pitts is happy for a review. He is Yeah, passed. he's tired. <laughs> it's right. Here's from the goal line. Look, there's the initial contact, and his foot gets over. Boy, so I don't he know. spins, doesn't he? Yeah. Man. Didn't see that. I have to be honest. Gets stopped. Little helicopter job right here. And then he spins. I don't know, though. I don't know if he got there. Gene Steratore is with us. He definitely makes a heck of a second effort, guys. And on this turn, he does have the football on the back part of his body. And I don't see anything crossing. You know, the officials on that goal line have to continue to pinch and run in as quick as they can until they can see a ball. And without seeing it, naturally, they can't do a touchdown. And so they stay That's with what was called. Yeah. It's only the length of the football from the goal line. That review allowed the Alabama defense to get their goal line defense on the field because Florida was going hurry up after the pass. Now Trask has spent the majority of the night in the shotgun. Would you want to get under center here when you got a quarterback that weighs 240 pounds? Maybe an extra lineman. Yep, he's going to be in the gun standing at the five. He'll run it again. Stopped again. Ball is out again. Alabama's got it. And it might have been Will Anderson who caused another fumble. I think there's a flag on the field. I see one in the end zone. Offside. Oh. On the defense. Wow. Number 28. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Josh Job offside. First down. 
Darius Tony went in motion. I wonder if Job attacked Tony when he went in motion on the play. He's right here. He's almost holding back. hands with him. Oh, so he must have lined up offsides right from the get go. Remember, they were at about the one foot line, yes. so it wouldn't take much to be offside. And now it's less than the one foot line. And finally, Trask is under center. And he'll hand it off, and it's a touchdown, Florida. Damian Pierce. From above, Damian Pierce gets the handle and gets his fourth rushing touchdown of the year, one they desperately needed. Went over that right side, give Reese and the Lance good job, number 51 and 56 at the point of attack, and he easily got into the end zone. McPherson, the point after. It's a one touchdown game again, 6.33 to go. Let's see if taking a different look of Joe being off sides. He is right there. <laughs> Since the ball's on the one-inch line, he's offside, right? They moved it that much closer. Trask handed off to his tailback, and it's 45-38. Top-ranked Alabama with a 45-38 lead over seventh-ranked Florida here. The 6.33 remaining. And from our AT&T 5G pylon cam, Another look at the penalty on Josh Job. And the ball is, you can see, almost on the goal line. He steps a couple inches in. And this is a six-inch touchdown run by Pierce to get Florida back to within a score. And a squib kick. Slade Bolden's got to get to it. Now oh, it's going to be picked up by Devontae Smith. Well, there's smart... Special teams played by Alabama just almost daring Florida to try to onside kick it because they put their ball, best ball handler out there to make sure that if they do try it, they're right there. Six and a half minutes to go as Nick Saban gets in that huddle to talk to his offense. All year, Nick Saban has talked about the need to be able to run the ball when you have to. He's coming up with this spot right here. Doesn't mean he won't throw, but can you run the ball? when you need to right here. The guy flanking Mac Jones, Najee Harris, has run it for 132 yards tonight so far. And he's gonna get the handle here, and Najee Harris broke a tackle, goes for about 15. Yes, he can run it very well. Basically shotgun isolation play. Turn around, follow Billingsley. Good block inside on the linebacker for Florida that time. Ventro Miller and bust your running back out. Marco Wilson is the guy that was shaken up on the play for Florida. And he's trying to snap his chin strap and say, I can stay out here, but I think they're going to say, no, you're not. And he'll head to the Florida sideline. So Najee Harris... With that run, 146 yards rushing on the night. At the end of the play, Wilson gets pushed by one of the offensive linemen for yeah, it was Landon as Dickerson. Dickerson. Yep. <laughs> Dickerson's always in the middle of something. So how about this Gator defense? Remember, they got no stops in the first half. They've had three in the second half. They stopped the fourth down play. They forced a punt, and they forced a field goal, which in this game almost counts like a stop. First down at the 48. And there's Dickerson again doing his little dance as he thinks that Florida is offside. Where's Dickerson, a transfer from Florida State, offside. knows the Gators well. On the defense, number 56, five-yard penalty, first down. And going to see the movement, and then Dickerson just, does his little dance. Just, there just, it is, there it is. <laughs> Did that against LSU a few times as well. Najee Harris 
Busts it outside. Najee Harris on his way. All the way down inside the 20-yard line. Donovan Steiner saved a touchdown. It's as old as football is right this. This is an offensive guard pulls and kicks out. Foul the fullback, but this time it's the H-back Billingsley. It's the first play you put in as a running back. Just end man a line of scrimmage. You kick out with the guard and you run right behind him. Devontae Smith gets a block out on the outside. Najee Harris runs inside that block and picked up 29 yards. Can you run the ball when you have to? The answer's been yes. Ventrell Miller down at the end. Shaking up with 5.52 remaining and Alabama driving again. Coming up when we're done, Adam Rook and BJ break it all down and tell you who's going to the college football playoff in their opinion on the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Najee Harris having a sensational night. 242 total yards, five touchdowns. Alabama back in the red zone. First down at the Florida 18. Everybody shifts on both sides of the ball. Mac Jones takes the snap. Najee Harris takes the run down to the 15. So remember their goal for Alabama in this football game was if we churn up a lot of plays in the first half in the fourth quarter we may be able to be able to slow get this tired defense and run the ball if we have to at the end so far so good 50 plays in the first half in the game so far this will be their 80th coming up wow. for 591 yards play action jones to the end zone Touchdown, Devontae Smith. That might seal it, and that might be your Heisman Trophy winner, if that guy isn't. Well, when you have 10 guys in the box, okay, 10 right there, you know it's one-on-one -on -one to the outside. Fake the play action, best receiver on coverable, and easy touchdown. Devontae Smith, he's going to win the Bolitnikoff Award, I can guarantee you that. Jalen Waddle says, man, I wish I was out there. That. <laughs> That's exactly what he was thinking. So Alabama, as has been the case all year, and that's Dickerson that's down the center. They've had an answer for every drive that somebody's put together against them. I know the Alabama bench was upset about a play. And I wonder if they feel somebody took a shot on Landon Dickerson. And you now we got a lot of action going on. Zach Carter got his helmet off, and he's doing some chirping down there. And Dan Mullins out there. And now he's getting, getting into it with his own players, with own teammates. Alabama getting the crowd excited. Dan Mullen. Doing the same thing. There is a flag, and we're going to go back and see what we can see. Here he is. Keep your eye on him and see what happens around number 69. Pass is completed. Dickerson finishes his play inside on Slayton, number 56. Got thrown down. Yep. Nothing too unusual there so far. Dan Mullen on the ear of Matt Leffler. Oh, man. I know. Just talking about Landon Dickerson, the anchor of that offensive line, the center. He's a colorful character and a heck of a player. And, oop, he just popped up. I think he's still going to the cart, though. He is. Wow, that's... I don't see anybody get hurt, especially five minutes left in a championship game. Yeah, he's kind of the ultra ego of that offensive line. Now his teammates, Najee Harris, the first to come out, pat him on the chest. Everybody else will do the same. 
How about that for a guy who transferred into Alabama? How about his teammates love his competitiveness and toughness? What a scene that is. Huh? He's going, hey, let's finish off the next five minutes, fellas. Zachary Carter with the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty as they take off. Landon Dickerson and from the pylon came. And there you see over on the right side the weird landing of being thrown down. And even with all that, he had a smile on his face and winking as they take him to the Alabama locker room. We'll just cross our fingers and hope it's not something serious. It's way over here it happens. He gets swung around on the play. And landed weirdly on his left and leg. I don't think the pylon afterwards is what hurt him. I think as he whipped around, his leg hit funny, and that's what happened. I don't think it was when Slayton kind of got on top again. I don't think that's when it happened. I think it happened before that. I did not see anything with Carter, number 17. It was unsportsmanlike conduct, took his helmet off. Here's from the start of the play, just an easy pitch and catch off play action to Devontae Smith. And there, right at the 10 yard line, is where Landon Dickerson landed. Meanwhile, Rackard in for the point after to try to make it 52 to 38. And does. So obviously, Zachary Carter reacted after all of that to get the on sportsmanlike penalty. Right. 90 points now in this game. That's the second most ever in an SEC championship game. And the third straight game for Alabama of 50 plus. Devontae Smith, just another average night. 15 <laughs> yeah. catches, 184 yards, and two touchdowns. Well, a lot of people are wondering will he get more than the Balintikoff? So let's go back to Desmond at Michigan, his year for the Heisman. You see it pretty close, huh? Yes. The return yardage is an extra bonus. And Devante had a punt return of 84 yards for a touchdown last week. This one just runs the inside route, easy pitch and catch, and just flips the ball to the official for his 17th receiving touchdown of the year. Look at the Alabama offense. Five touchdown night, yep. matching a career high for Mac Jones. Five touchdowns for Najee Harris. And 15, 184, and two, as I just mentioned, so for Devontae Smith. When we start to do these, these games all the time, we have to come up with an open, right? We always go, should we do the big three? No, we did the big three. Sure, well, what else are we going to do? Let's do the offensive line. Then we got another one. Well, let's do the big three again. Yeah. Well, the big three is pretty big. Will be interesting. Will be interesting though, if the voters split their votes a little bit between Devonte and Mac Jones, and someone else is able to sneak in there. You, know, you, 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 you can make you vote the way you want. I mean, Trevor Lawrence said it season, missed a couple games, but uh, these two guys from top to bottom, I think Trask and Jones has had the most complete years. I agree. Trask still not done. Quick throw to Kadarius Tully. Broke one tackle, dives forward almost to a first down. Might have gotten it, in fact. Florida with all their timeouts. They want to hustle here as much as possible. Yeah, they'd like to score without using their timeouts. Second down and a yard. Trask, pressure from behind. He got rid of it, but it's broken up. And Patrick Sertan breaks it up. Jamie? Well, Alabama's calling it a lower leg injury for Dickerson, but I was able to gather as much that it was a knee for him when he went down. His teammate on the line, Alex Leatherwood, was seen crying on the sideline after that injury. Dickerson was smiling as he was going off, but it is a knee, guys. Well, he is one of their most popular players, as you saw with all his teammates around him. Kadarius Tony had a little slip screen with some blocker in front, got a first down. That'll be a, an important loss for this football team as Alabama enters into the playoffs. Yeah. A much bigger loss than you would think, I think. Center is so important. And 
Making a lot of the line calls and all of that. And he plays a physical center, too. You know, and, and, and really important setting that tempo from that position. Trask. Down the middle. Incomplete intended for Pitts. And a flag. You get holding or pass interference on Bank. Uh, branch that time, number 14, I believe. Pass interference on the defense, number 14, 15 yard penalty, first down. Doing that middle read down the middle of the field. Branch got a tough matchup and then puts his hands on him and grabs him. You grab that jersey just a little bit like that. Here comes the flag. So in Alabama territory, the Gator offense at the 46. Jacob Copeland, Patrick Sertan, and I, coverage. I do have to laugh a little bit. When they put Tony and Pitts in the slot or at the H-back, they match up in this defense against the true freshman, Malachi Moore and Branch. The two true freshmen are going, all right, all right, we could <laughs> cover somebody else. I mean, yeah. you know, our, <laughs> Boy, that guy's been good. They both have, but... Malachi yeah. Moore playing that star position has been sensational for a 19-year-old. And I mean, this is, I know we're freshmen and we get the bad duty, but this is pretty hard. <laughs> See, number 13 is following number one. There he goes. Second down and 10. Trask on a crossing route. Got it complete. First down. Naquan Wright out of bounds. Will Anderson knocked him out. Yep, that time Will Anderson, remember earlier in the game, peeling with the running back? He just didn't do it quick enough that time. Florida up to the line in a hurry. Or trying to get set in a hurry, and now they shift everybody. Tight wide receiver grouping right now. Again, knocked out by Josh Joe. Aquan right again. They're trying to sneak those backs out there, and Joe did a good job to stay with it. They're still holding on to their three timeouts. They know that if they score, they'll go, they probably go onside kick. They're at the 25. They only need two yards for a first down, and there's only three minutes left. Aquan right. I don't think so. Yard shy. Dylan Moses. Part of the group that made the stop. Sensational numbers. Mac Jones has the better of it right now, and his team's got the lead. Trask will keep it. He'll get the first down. He gets to the 20. A little bit slow to get up, but he knows he's got to. This has got to be, what, seventh or eighth run for Kyle Trask? Uh, why don't we try that this is his 14th rush. <laughs> a couple of them are sacks, but he has had to carry the football. Trask backpedals. Trying to find a receiver. Finally does, but it's going to be a loss on the play to Trayvon Grimes and a flag. There is no foul on the play. There is no foul on the play. All right, let's pick that one up then. On that particular play, and you can't think this fast, Florida would have been better off with an incomplete pass on that one. Yeah, they lost two, Yep. and they lost it down. And they're going to have to take a timeout. And they will with two minutes, ten seconds remaining. Playoff picture. If this lead holds, Florida goes by the wayside and uh, in the hunt is that group. Yeah, and I think all of those teams deserve a strong uh, saying with that committee. Cincinnati undefeated. They at least need to be in the conversation. Texas A&M is going, uh, Alabama's pretty good. Notre Dame is going, you know, top to bottom. We lost, you know, we split with Clemson and Ohio State says, we only played six. And I know you're going to hold against this, but we're Big Ten champs and we're undefeated. So this.
against this, but we're Big Ten champs and we're undefeated. So this is going to be a tough one coming down the end. Well, Notre Dame and Clemson split. The big question mark is the six. Is the six, six wins for, enough? Yep. Got to believe that Notre Dame feels they're in. Florida, if they would have won this game, they would have been in the conversation big time, as good as Alabama is. Tenth play of the Florida drive. I need to score pretty quickly with only two timeouts left. Trask going to the end zone. Pitts has got it. Touchdown, Florida. It's not over yet. Kind of pulled down Brian Branch on the play, number 14. There's the matchup. See if he doesn't get his hand on him as the ball's in the air. His left hand, kind of, yeah, not enough. Tugged him a little bit, but not enough to make the call. From up here, I thought he kind of flung him down, but second look, no way. Kyle Pitts from Kyle Trask again to cap a 75-yard drive in 10 plays. He said they need to score fast. They did. Andy Diggerson's back out of the locker room to have a look. Florida's going to go for two now. And if they're able to go onside kick and get it, they'll go two again if they, if they have to, to try to tie it. Now a one timeout. Once you call the first timeout, you might as well take the second one and get everybody on board. If you're going for two, it's worth a timeout. So Trask. Has got Malik Davis in the backfield with him. Got a bunch set of receivers to the right. And Davis is going to join that group. Four receivers basically to Trask's right. He's, to the He's left. going the other way. And the one-handed attempt. Now a flag down. Daniel Wright came up with a football going the other way. But there's flags all over the place. Four to the right, but 84 to the left. Yeah. And Joe dragged yep, Pitts did. down. That's yes, he did. a penalty. And then the ricochet oh, came off to Daniel Wright. It's his hand right in the collar right there and yanks. And it's Pass interference good call. on the defense, number 28. That penalty is half the distance. First down. Correction. Try down. So another try as Trask comes over to talk to Dan Mullen. Is it number 11's number again? Well, at least it puts the running play back in the call sheet. No doubt about that from that distance. Two-point attempt with just over two to play in regulation. Just outside the Alabama one. Same deal. Trask. Looks over to the sideline, saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And here he goes on a quarterback draw, and he's in. Two-point conversion for Trask. He's done this so many times, not only tonight, but during the course of the season. Barely touched. Mac Jones is going, what do I have to do to put these guys away? Get but the onside kick is what they got to do right now. 52-46. Playing the analytics was Dan Mullen right there. He's got two chances for a two-point play. He decided, let's might as well go for it right now because if he was going to score twice, he was going for it on the second one for the win. His team is beat. He did not want to go overtime. We see some receivers coming out here. Devontae Smith, Forrestal, the tight end. Patrick Satan, the top guy in the secondary. Najee Harris as the hands team comes out for Alabama. 
Brian Robinson's there, number four as well. All those guys catch passes is their forte. Recovering a kick is what's big right now. There it comes. Devontae Smith, and he grabs it and goes out of bounds. Maybe his best catch of the night. And Alabama's got the ball. Great job. Kyle Trask fought the whole way in this football game, knowing, knowing that his defense had a tough one, and calmly, Devontae says, I got this thing. A couple of good bounces. It hits his right hand, his left hand. Corrals it. Kyle Trask wants the ball back. They might not get it. They've only got one timeout left. First down at the 47. That part doesn't really matter. Najee Harris behind Jones. He's the man. And no gain, maybe a yard for Najee. They're still pushing down there. Dan Mullen takes his time out. That's it. With 152 remaining. So now two guys have joined the group with the most passing yards in SEC championship game history. Both passing Danny Orfel. Trask with 408. Mac Jones 418. So there's 112 seconds left in the game. Remember, there's two 40-second clocks. So Alabama can take 80 seconds off of the 112. Steve Sarkeesian there, Before letting fourth, them know that very thing. Before fourth down, Alabama, Florida could get the ball back with 20 to 25 seconds with a punt. That guy is hoping they do. So is that coach hoping the importance of saving the timeouts there on that you know that those plays just keep the three timeouts would have been huge again they've got that eye formation with McMillan the linebacker in front of Najee Harris and Najee is upended as soon as he got the ball by Zach Carter and it's third down and nine you see the play clock now at a half minute the game clock at 140. The entire Alabama defense looking to the sideline. The Florida defense getting ready to get lined up and try to make a stop here. I think Nick Saban will call timeout with one second to go. Mac Jones is going to make his way over to the sideline to talk things over with the head coach and his Offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian in there is the timeout Gary talked about with 113 to go and a third down and nine. Florida again out of timeouts. Now the question is you've got arguably the best quarterback in the country on third and nine. Do you let him throw one? I wouldn't. But it's a new world. <laughs> I'm eating 40 seconds and taking my chances. I'd run the ball. The play takes maybe three seconds to run if it's a short gain like the last two have been. And if they bounce it out and pick up more than nine yards, so it's the ball game. Again, 73 seconds in the game, 40 second clock. So there's 33 seconds available after a punt. Florida gets the ball with 25 seconds to go in the game. Najee Harris has carried the ball 30 times tonight. Here comes number 31. Trying to bounce it outside, and he's not going anywhere. Brad Stewart brings him down. But now the clock will run, as Gary talked about. Florida playing. 11-man rush defense. Very hard to pick up any yards. Alabama's just basically trying to run to the wide side of the field to kill another three or four or five seconds. And remember who's back there. Darius Tony. Right.
Clock winding down. Under 30 now. And down to 26. A perfect putt would be just out of bounds, right? You don't want to take the chance of, of Tony. And remember, if there's a Hail Mary, they've got this number 84 that plays for four that is <laughs> six foot six inches tall. The drama takes us down in the last 26 seconds. Fourth down. Alabama's second punt only of the night. Upcoming. Trask warming up on the sideline, hoping for at least a shot. And that guy averages 13.7 per punt return. And he does have a touchdown against Kentucky, to his credit, as a punt returner. Devontae Smith is on the field chasing down this punt from the gunner position. It's top of your screen. Charlie Scott to punt. And hits a dandy. Tony way back at the nine. Made one guy miss, but not the second one. Great coverage, a perfect punt. Helms with the tackle. There's 16 seconds left. No timeouts for the Gators. Every completion for Florida, well, they get, what, three or four plays, has to be for a first down. To try to get themselves set up for a Hail Mary at the end. But they're a long, long way from that goal line on the other end. Just a terrific football game for both these teams, but really salute this Florida team I'm hanging in there, watching the game at the beginning of the second quarter, and through the second quarter, it looked like they were underwater, but they came back. Trask inside his own five. Hit, and he's dropped, and that'll do it. They're not going to have time for another play. They can't get their players back. It's over. Alabama survives in a great SEC championship game in Atlanta. That's the one thing you couldn't have happen if you had any hope was to take a sack. Now Kyle Trax doesn't have to put his head down. I'll tell you that now. This Alabama football team, we know how good they are. They showed it, but both of these teams tonight put on a show. It's hard to see everybody's faces with masks on, especially the coaches, but it looked like when Nick Saban shook hands with Dan Mullen, he had a little bit of a smile on his face as if to say, holy cow, yeah. was that a game? Here's the last sack, the fifth one of the night for Alabama. Christian Harris is the one who cleans it up. He's in that spy position and when he runs up in the pocket he gets it they don't come much better than this one Landon Dickerson says those are my guys doing his little dance on the cart this time Jamie's with Nick Saban coach was that final play emblematic of how tough your defense had to be all night well, I tell you what, they're a very challenging team, and we certainly didn't match up with them, and that was my concern going in, but got to give our team a lot of credit. Offense responded every time they needed to so that we could stay ahead in the game. Special teams made the plays they needed to make at the end of the game, so it's a great team win. We knew it would have to be this way, so I'm excited for our players. I'm excited for our fans. You know, it's something significant to me to win the SEC championship. Florida's got a great team, and um, we knew it would be a tough game, and it's probably good for us to be in a dog fight, and we were certainly in one tonight. You had a lot of, uh, you didn't have a lot of challenges up until this point this season. What can you say about the way Kyle Trask pushed your defense this evening? Well, I, I just think that, you know, 84 and one. I mean, that, that those two guys we couldn't guard. All right, so it was a lot of problems. We make a play down here that would have, you know, and we're offsides on defense and undisciplined type play, but. Uh, hey, there's a lot of great plays in this game on both sides of the ball. I'm just proud of our guys because they did what they had to do to win. And, you know, Cal Trash did a great job, and so did their receivers. And, you know, we didn't cover them very well. Where's the appreciation for you for Mac Jones? Well, my appreciation is for every guy on our team. Now, these guys have worked hard all year long. It's been a tough year, a lot of disruptions. They've handled it extremely well. And to win the SEC championship is something I'm very proud of. And 
Now I'm sure they'll get an opportunity to go to the playoffs. Congratulations, Coach. All right, thank you. Well, Mac Jones, they call him the Joker. No joke about this game. It was a classic all the way through. 52 to 46. Congratulations to the Crimson Tide of Alabama. They're your 2020 SEC champions. That's going to do it for Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl, Brad Nessler saying so long for Atlanta. 52 to 46. What a game. College football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage is up after these messages from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Good night.